Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking fuck. Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Wednesday, March 15th, 2023, the program starts now. Much mana! Much mana to you as well, Usas and Usas, watching all around the globe. Yes. Today has become a massive day in our program's history because just yesterday, at about 5.15 p.m., I was sent a text that said, hey, I think it's time. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And I said, what do you mean you think it's time? I think it's time to let the world hear where we're at. And I said, Aaron, you let me know if you want me to let the world know about you coming on tomorrow. And he said, yeah, let's do it. I put a tweet out yep. saying, hey, listen, mm -hmm. you are cordially invited to Aaron Rodgers Wednesday, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just 56 minutes, 34 seconds away from right now, Aaron Rodgers will be joining the program. Look at those numbers, bro. Whoa. Whoa. That's a good tweet. That's a move. 10,000 some yeah. retweets uh. if you put those two together. 15.2 million impressions, 44,500 likes, which I still don't fully comprehend. <laughs> why they are a stat. They don't really mean much. It means like, yeah, I saw it. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. Cool. But nonetheless, people are very interested in what this man has to say. Yep. And we've had quite a ride alongside Aaron Rodgers the last three seasons. Obviously, the first two surmounted in an MVP performance. Back-to-back -back MVPs, as he would say, and as we have to recognize, he was the COVID MVP yep. for the NFL. Both years that it happened, he was the MVP. And also, there was a lot of conversations about his 500-page report and his beliefs right. in the entire COVID situation. Last season, vastly different year than it had been for the two previous ones. Things went a little bit astray, had a broken thumb. Team didn't actually execute as well as we had thought they were going to, had a down year. Came down to the last game of the season against the Detroit Lions. Win and you're in the playoffs. This is a very normal thing for the Packers with Aaron Rodgers to go into the playoffs. They lose that game. Lions beat them. Massive win for the brand new Lions. Hell yeah. Huge. Lions didn't get in the playoffs either, though. No, they didn't. So it was literally a game that surmounted in nothing at the end of the regular season. So this offseason, there was a lot of conversation about what was going to happen. Is Aaron thinking about retiring because the team is seemingly about to transition into a brand new era? They drafted a quarterback in the first round. I apologize. They traded into the first round to draft a quarterback after losing in the NFC Championship, probably because they weren't able to tackle anybody and also didn't have enough weapons, they trade into the first round. Aaron Rodgers on our draft spectacular. That's coming up in a few weeks. It's our biggest show of the year. Oh, yeah. right. Aaron was on the draft spectacular for round one, early in round one, and said, hey, you never know, we might get uh, excited, trade up and go get a weapon or Ooh. something, you know. Mm -hmm. Haven't drafted a first round wide receiver in like 20 years in mm -hmm. Green Bay. Maybe we get another weapon. Then they did trade up and we're like, oh shit, all right, get Aaron on the horn. Because yeah. okay, he said if they trade up, we don't do it. And they draft Jordan Love. Ty Schmidt, dressed up as Mad Mel Kuyper, says, God damn it! Because he knew that what that meant was, A, we're not trying to win the Super Bowl right now. Because if we were going to do that, we're going to try to take a step past the NFC Championship. We're going to try to get the player that we need to win the Super Bowl. And also what it meant is you probably just pissed off Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. because he is a guy who you have not really helped out as much on the field or around him. And Seemingly, there had been a little bit of some disagreements going on in the public course of life with him and the Packers. I think that was an accurate assessment. Oh, yeah. I'd say. The Packers would go on to have success. Jordan Love would sit, and then he would sit, and then he would sit. And now, with what happened last season and with what Jordan Love has left on his first contract and a decision that the Packers have to make very soon, all roads seemingly led to a new chapter for the Green Bay Packers. What will Aaron say for the first time since coming out of the darkness on this program? He did talk to Aubrey Marcus, founder of On It, I do believe, mm -hmm. and also podcast host of the show. I have no idea what the name is, but... Uh, it's a good show. The Aubrey Marcus pod? Talking. I think that might be uh, it. Okay. I think no, that's it. talking without 
shoes on. Okay. They were. That was the vibe yeah. of the thing. It was a very good conversation. We appreciate it. He talked about his experience, his thoughts. So we tried to learn as much as we could from that. But I think Aaron was even still trying to figure out exactly what he was going to be doing with his future. This will be our first time chatting with him. We are just as excited as everybody else. I have no idea what he's going to say in this. Like I said yesterday, I literally get a text at 515. First time I heard from him in a long time. Because I'm not a guy that's going to pester or bother or prod either. Like, that's not my position with Aaron Rodgers. He and I, I think, very friendly with each other. I don't think we are friends with each other. You know, that there's a... I would assume we're friends, but like I'm you not guys in. Aren't just shooting the breeze. Yeah, like I'm not in the. Hey, I got an opinion, a thought. Mm -hmm. I'm not in that with Aaron, and I think it's for the better of all parties in this particular case. So I am just as curious as everybody else for what's going to happen today. <clears throat> we know this. We know that retirement was still on the board. Oh yeah. Very recently. Yep. Right, like yep. as of last week, yeah, almost a week and a half. Uh, retirement was still on the board. We know that the Jets spent 11 hours seemingly in his house in Southern California a few days back. We know that a deal has not been made, and we know that people are getting antsy, and we know the people that Aaron knows, Nathaniel Hackett also knows, offense coordinator for the Jets, also knows, are getting hired to the New York Jets. All signs in everybody's eyes are that he's going to the Jets. Mm -hmm. I would like you to know that I also have that opinion from reading the tea leaves <laughs> that are everywhere. But we have no fucking clue. And Aaron actually said, until I say something, nothing matters, pretty much. Yes. Right? Is yep. that what he, that's yeah. pretty much what he has said. <clears throat> exactly. My circle does not talk to anybody. So Trey Wingo, I do believe, has a pretty good source in the Jets organization. Mm -hmm. We assume he has a pretty good source in the Jets organization. Like, hey, was it an 11-hour We'll ask Aaron. Right? Because yeah. we don't yeah. know if any of this stuff has been sure. legit. So there's a lot for us to talk about. And I assume we're going to learn an immense amount of things about the future of a couple franchises yeah. here in about 51 minutes or so. So I'm excited as everybody else is. Woke up this morning, it just felt a little bit oh, different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Play yeah. a little pick ball. It seemed to have a little bit more spring in the paddle. Feet seemed to be moving a little bit quicker. The eyes seemed to be tracking the ball better. I mean, I took a shit this morning. No wipes were needed. It is a great day. <laughs> no matter. We're going to have a great day today. We're very thankful. We also have Jesse Bates joining us. Nice. Obviously, safety from the Bengals that just signed with the Falcons for $36 million, I believe, guaranteed over the first two years. Ooh. Can't wait to chat with him in the third hour. Shout out to the man that's joining us on stage, 14-year NFL vet. Corner for Titans, Wide. Cowboys, Wide. Bengals. Wide. Wide receiver for Titans. Wide. Returner for Titans, Wide. Cowboys, Wide. Bengals. Wide. Ladies and gentlemen, legend Adam Pac-Man. Yeah. That was right, right? You yeah, didn't play wide right. receiver anywhere else, right? That was right. How come? Why not? Why didn't they put you wide out anywhere yeah. else? I don't know. Um, we practiced a little bit in Dallas, but uh, Norm Child was coming from SC with that Rezzy Bush and, and Lindale White era. Um, I think he's seen a lot in me as a dual athlete. Not oh, you're talking about a little wiggle, yeah. Yeah, a little, little explosion. Uh -uh. Uh, Nowadays, all the returners mostly wide receiver weapons, yep. right? Yeah. Because you get the ball in space, you do your thing. In this modern offense of the NFL, I assume you'd be getting the ball a lot with how much space is being created by these offenses. Of course. I love to be in that Shanahan program, you know what I mean? Um, or Andy Reid. Think about what Andy Reid. Yeah. yeah, Matt Patricia, yeah. he did it this year. Andy Reid. Yeah. I mean, he'd be having you running. Sir, you'd be in the middle of Matt Patricia did not do any of that. <laughs> Marcus Jones. At the Patriots. Oh, Marcus Jones, first player in NFL history to have a punt return touchdown, pick six, and a reception touchdown. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Matt yeah. Patricia was wild. He's a genius. Yep. He's there. But imagine that little ring around a rosy thing oh. with him standing in the middle of it, crouched down. And then all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden, boom, bitches. You know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we got Pac Man outside. Uh, that's the type of thing. Nonetheless, you're going to get dunked on in this office. In is what these people feel like. The Toxic Table at Boston Code. Oh, one. At Ty Schmidt. And then one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Did you, you have a question also, for Pac? You listed off all those. You forgot to say safety for fucking nobody, okay? <laughs> I <laughs> treat yeah. my fucking safety. Yeah, he's a corner, okay? <laughs> my wingspan is longer than everybody else's in the NFL. Mm -hmm. This dude lifted his hand because we almost got him. <clears throat> we were so close. Yesterday, Adam Pacman Jones said, nobody's catching a ball on me in this office. And I said... Holy shit. That's bold. That's a massive statement you just <laughs> yeah. made. You might as well have told everybody in here, think of every idea you could possibly come up with to make a catch on somebody, mm -hmm. and it needs to happen on pack. I just thought you spotlighted something mm -hmm. that really I didn't even expect to come into our existence. At all. Connor this morning, handing footballs to people, saying, hey, when no. I go, <laughs> I'm going to go around the trash can, and then I'll be standing right behind pack, put that thing up. Toss it up. And Pac has his little spidey senses, and all of a sudden <laughs> he, he starts like he starts figuring it out. Yeah. I throw a ball though that I thought 
I thought it was getting over. Bur I felt real as it was leaving my hand. It was like a little drop shot. It was like, oh, this is going to go yeah. right up over Peck. There's no way. This is when um, you know Allen Iverson used to shoot uh, like after a whistle was blown, mm -hmm. teardrops, and then somebody would s block it. Yep, can't let him see it go down. And then there's that video of him. I think he gets fouled. He goes, he, he's at, he gets fouled, and then he's at fouling. He throws that fucker like off the top of the arena and then it swishes in or whatever. And it was right after a guy had swatted his shit before that. And then he just like looked at him obviously and then just like walked away. That was the throw I thought I made mm -hmm. on Pat. I thought I put it up way too high mm -hmm. and it was going to drop right into it. We didn't have a lot of space. No. We didn't have a lot of, probably six yards, seven yards probably. About. Six yards of space there. And this fucking guy in – Sweet new Jays. Oh, yeah. they, they were absolutely sick. Unreal. These jeans were maybe the coolest jeans I've ever seen yeah, in never my seen entire like. life. And then he's got this vintage Pac Man mm -hmm. hybrid shirt on, yeah. chains, <laughs> bunnies, <laughs> mm -hmm. takes off, and then his hand, go go gadgets. Yeah, that was absurd. And then it hits his tip of his thing like this. He goes, Nope, never going to get it. Never going to get it. And then he said, uh, Longest wingspan, it's combine. And Nick, who's six foot, Three, four? Two and a half. Oh, okay. Call it four in shoes. That's not. Hey, because <laughs> I put these cowboy boots on, I'm 6'3 all of a sudden. Yeah. That is not good. 6'8 yeah. and skates. And yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. 6'8 and yep. skates. Yep. You're 100% right. right. Nick puts his hand up, right? And patches, his middle finger is actually like this. This is what his. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is actually what his middle finger looks yeah, like compared to the rest of his hand. Mm -hmm. That fucking thing went right out. Him and, him and Nick went, I'm like, damn, you were, you were made to be a corner. Like, mm -hmm. okay, we are going to have, we're going to have the size to be able to be quicker than everybody because, like, you're not seeing a lot of heavy cars move as quick yeah, as no. the smaller ones, mm -hmm. but also just going to have fucking, you know what I mean, go, able go, go to do that. It. That was fantastic to watch you. Still think somebody's going to get you, though. Oh, yeah. Which I think needs to be addressed. Yeah, I think you should think about that. We shall see. What are you 1-0 and right now? 1-0. and Well, you should rescind it maybe just like when I'm ready, you know, and we'll catch it on. Because at some point, we're going to put stuff in your hands, probably put a soccer ball at your feet. Hey, let's see what you can do with the soccer ball. And then we're going to have someone throw something at you. Yeah, like that basketball hoop that everybody started using. Boom. Where exactly. they would just like hold it up, like yeah. I think. I just used the ball. Yeah, I mean, oh, so you said my hands aren't full anymore. You yeah. see, you see, what well, my hands were full with yeah. now is what's breaking up the pass. Normally, I'd use this middle finger, you know, that just fucking so <laughs> here. The sword. Yeah, the absolute. <laughs> it's a jousting sword. But this time, I'll use the ball. Anyways, Pack, it's been great to have you. Yeah. It's been fantastic, Ty. I think you're the first person we should certainly chat about uh, today. Your life. I think you've kind of come to the understanding, as we all have. Like, the Packers are ready for that next chapter. Feels yep. like Jordan Love, it is his time. Mm -hmm. I saw a video of him training with his quarterback coach. He did seem to have a much better rotation and throw and everything than he had, like, whenever he came into the NFL draft. And the videos were surfacing from that first training camp that were not good. Not good at all. No, it was like every bad thing he did as a quarterback at that training camp, they said, all right, let's get that on the internet as quick as yeah, possible. Put it up. We saw nothing else. I mean, we're talking about missing nets that are, like, 10 feet by 10 feet. Yeah. NFL wide open holes like this big. Skipping balls on outs and, you yeah, know. Yeah, not making it. A lot of balls on the ground against air, everything like that. So then we watch him against that Philadelphia Eagles team. And then we start hearing some stories about a practice. And then we start seeing him work with his quarterback coach a little bit. Looks, He looks a lot like Aaron. Mm -hmm. Are you at the point where you're pumped about the Jordan Love era because you have to be? Or are you still kind of wallowing in the, oh, shit, the Aaron Rodgers era seemingly is over. We'll learn more in 44 minutes. Um, Kind of. I mean, yeah, like you said, you have to be pumped. You know, like there, this is not the time to be. And I'm not a turncoat. You know, like I love Rodgers. I, you know, the, the being – Every single year since he's pretty much taken over, like you legitimately go into a season thinking, hey, the Packers could win a Super Bowl this year. And that's very rare. You know, like a lot of fan bases will never have that. So I'm eternally grateful for that. Not not only that, him coming on the show the last three years, but it's weird because it almost like like you mentioned, like I yeah, I'm I've kind of you know, rescinded to the fact that he is going to be a Jet next. He certainly isn't going to be a Packer. Whatever he decides to do, he's not coming back to Green Bay. So it kind of feels like I'm sitting on the train tracks, and I can see the train from yeah. like two miles away. And this isn't like an Austin Powers moment where it's rolling two miles an hour. No, no. that thing is barreling down on <laughs> yeah. me, and I'm just going to sit there and let it fucking pulverize me and turn me into just pink mist. And then we're going to move, and then we're getting back up, 
And we're hopping on a new train called the Love Train. Is that what it is? I mean, what, what's, yeah. what's yeah. the alternative, yeah. you know? And I guess, the like you mentioned, the good thing is is he's gotten to sit behind Rodgers and, and learn from him. So you hope that he's picked up quite a bit and he actually has grown and gotten much better. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, the rubber's going to meet the road. We're going to find out real soon. They need to pick up his fifth-year option by, I think, like May 15th. So who knows? Like maybe we'll have a Danny Dimes situation where they don't pick it up. He plays this year, and then if – it it isn't the you know the the right move then then we're back at square one and you got to draft someone but no certainly you can't yeah I, I think it's better to you know the the phrase I mean smile because it happened you oh, know okay. or, yeah don't okay. cry because it's, it's over gone. smile yeah. because it happened because yeah. it really is I mean you know being able to yeah. how how many teams get two Hall of Fame quarterbacks you know back to back like it Colts just kind of yeah Patriots. but that's <laughs> which who was the second what you guys Mac Mac I don't know Drew Bledsoe what are we talking come huh. on. Valid. Great wine, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. How about that shot he took on a... Oh, oh. Wait, still hear him. Wait, who was the Colt? What's that, pal? Who was the Colt? Peyton and... Peyton and Andrew Luck. What do you Curtis think? Curtis No, no, he, no. he quit. Andrew Luck, yeah. No, he retired. <laughs> he quit. Yeah, he, he retired. Quit on his team. No, he retired from football because his team didn't protect him for <laughs> a long, long time. The amount of... Ah, that Andrew Luck experienced in his yeah. life, not even on the field, but like... Think about just his day to day. Oh, his yeah. whole, he got beat the fuck up. Snowboarding, mm-hmm. biking. He, he's such a big nature guy, so that does make that, sense. Yeah. Yeah. He was riding a bike around town All acting like time. he wasn't Andrew Luck, which mm-hmm. was a wild scene. Had a helmet on, and then he was a fucking avatar yeah. sitting on this little huffy thing, just, all right, I'm going to pick up some stuff I from the deli or whatever. So I want a bird scooter. I mean, he was awesome. He's one of one. He's one of one. He retired, but he would have been. We assume this AFC, if Andrew Luck's still playing football, vastly different story, I think, with Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. The Aaron Rodgers situation, Pac-Man, from your standpoint, what do you think we learned today? And what do you think the Jets – like, the, the question across the bottom. They've been talking about this – I want to say more than we have. Two no. weeks. Two weeks. They definitely have. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. say they've been talking about it more than we have because the, the spec, it's literally on there right now. There's four yeah. shots of Aaron just cycling through – ESPN right now. So now it's how do we talk about it from every angle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Lamar or Aaron Rodgers was yesterday. Yes, that was yesterday's conversation. Lamar, available for conversations today at four. Go get your money, Lamar. Good luck, Lamar. Let's go. But then there's the conversation like, will the Jets regret going all in on Aaron Rodgers? So now the speculation is how the team's going to do if Aaron Rodgers is going to the Jets, Mm -hmm. right? We haven't even... That isn't even 100%. That has not been... not confirmed. Right? That has not been. No. But... We all assume that he's going. Now it's like, will they regret doing it? Do you think this is the right move for the Jets, and this is why the Jets are doing everything they can with Woody flying around and gifts? So what do you think of that team with Aaron if there was? I, I think this absolutely is the best move. Like you don't, you only get these chances once in so many years. You get what I'm saying? Aaron Rodgers is the last of the dime breed. Of the oh, what do you era. mean by that? What do you mean? By I'm that? saying uh, from the quarterbacks of the old era, I would say the oldest of the quarterbacks, Peyton. Yeah. Tom, Seven. the great. Breeze. Breeze. Seven. Um, he's the last one. Ben Roethlisberger, yeah. the Pittsburgh yeah. guy. Ben and Flacco. Ben Thank and you, Pat. He won a couple. And then yeah. Flacco won. Hey, he yeah. won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Win, but I don't Rivers. know if you put Flacco in that game. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, playoff. Playoff, playoff Joe? Joe? Surgical. Are you kidding me, bro? Ten tons. No oh, okay. Oh, playoff Joe? Okay. I'm with you, Pat. I'm with you, Joe. No, there was a graphic there, though, that had, like, Peyton Tom, Peyton Tom, Peyton Tom, Flacco. Yeah. Peyton Tom, Peyton Tom, Peyton Tom, and then Ben, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, three yeah. times for Ben. It was okay, sorry, championship sorry. game. But in, that was like kind of the graphic. You're saying of that generation almost. Yes. It's like there, this, there's one left yes. who has all the – still the – like Drew Brees at the end of his career, he's giving interviews whenever he was obviously playing with the Saints, and he was talking about how – the longer I play, obviously my brain is just getting better and better and better and better and better. He said, I'm just doing everything I possibly can to keep my arm, have my arm keep up. Like, I just need to have my arm keep up. Aaron, there's never been a question about his arm being able to keep up ever, right? Ever. You, you've seen him last year. He don't. Aaron don't miss too many throws. And he can still throw the ball probably on his knees 75 yards in the air. <laughs> Damn. Like, this guy is a freak of nature. Um, he, know how, he can make all the right checks. He know who the mic is. <laughs> he set the protection. <laughs> and he call out hats. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we was talking about guys that don't even call out hot rolls earlier. But, yeah, man, like I said, he, he's best of the best. That's the offensive coordinator. That's not- <laughs> wait, wait, what you guys talking about? Well, I think Pac-Man brought that up because he was – we were talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Allegedly, <laughs> oh. Allegedly came out that 
I don't know if it was wide receiver or tight end. Who said it on uh, what show? Fire, fire, fire yeah, Moose. Fire Moose. Fire Moose. Thank you, Moose. We are big fans of. He basically said, like, we had no hots last season. So, like, we had no hots, no checks, I've really. I've never seen an NFL offense that don't have hots that's built in. Did Pat, you watch them? Pat, you've never seen a high of school course, offense. Of course, I, of course I watched them. So you have seen we it. We have then. to play them. It made sense whenever you watched it. They were, like, the most boring. Yeah. It was, like, the most boring team of all time in the history of the Unless NFL. Unless you were throwing the ball to GP, baby, because then it was fun. And they got him. That's why it was. I was so surprised by it. It's like you got a guy who's a difference maker in George Pickens. I mean, oh, literally yeah. from draft night, he stole the world's hearts yes, right he did. away. What the fuck? You know, GP? <laughs> George Pickens? No, I'm no, I don't know him as a person. Kaboli said he'd be more surprised if he wasn't a superstar than like the question: Is he going to be a superstar? Yeah, every practice he was every, making some yeah. absurd. Mm -hmm. Hey, there are some incredible catches that happen in practice. Some incredible catches. I assume you have a few that nobody will ever see. When George Pickens was coming through training camp, every single reporter was like, oh, another George Pickens catch. Yeah. Yep, George just had another one. It was like every day he was making bangers. And then they have no hots, really no creativity we'll on the offense. Fixed. It's like, yo, you got a guy. They got a guy Toss in George Pickens. We'll get that figured out. Who's we? Fucking we, the program. Is it the same guy? Huh? Same offense coordinator? Y yeah. Oh, yeah, he'll get it figured out. For sure. Got, yeah, he'll got get it. One more year. Changes well, you're not team. clapping, Pac. Pac uh, will refuse to clap for that. Yeah. We ain't worried about it for that shit. I hope it take forever day for that. Hold on. Didn't you light Steelers no, jerseys on Joe fire? Hayden. Yeah, 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 I did. Joe Hayden box of jerseys. Yeah. got sent to Pac Man's house. Some <laughs> asshole sent them to my house. <laughs> oh, um, you were so, <laughs> so yeah. hilariously mad. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, you, were, you were legitimately pissed <laughs> yeah. about the box of Pittsburgh Steelers jerseys that showed up at your house. Yeah. I'm not a Pittsburgh guy. He it's knows a healthy that. rivalry with respect. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it's respect. He lit that shit on fire. And, uh, yeah. I think. What else would I gonna do with him, Pat? I don't. I, listen, Keep him? No, no, you can't do that, Pat. I can't right. do that. You can't. No way. Uh, no, with the I'm way. I even watch. Nobody wear a piss bird in my house, really. Oh, so it's like a known thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, Unwritten rule. There's certain things you don't do. I like that. Don't fucking come in the house with nothing but piss bird. And I have some family members that are diehard Steeler fans. Oh, so there's but no I shit talking. I huh? wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go to their house and wear bingo stuff. I'm just respectful. Thank you, you Pat. I mean? That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at you. What a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I, a lot of up. people watching that video did say, like, quickly and efficiently thought fire executed fire. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Oh, I got to light these on fire. Boom. Execution. Fire. <laughs> yeah. fire. It happened. Yep. Yeah. It, it was very quickly. Very impressive. All right, let's talk about some news around the NFL that has happened. Uh, we're 35 minutes out from Aaron. I can't wait to hear what he mm -hmm. honestly is going to say. Yeah. Jacked up. Where's he going to? Boom. We that got is. a clock. There it is. Why do we do a clock? Well, because this is what everybody else would do. Yeah. If they had this situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are... Pseudo mocking, also got probably let, a probably good idea. Know. Yeah, <laughs> pretty jacked up. Probably proper Send idea. Away. Yeah, probably a proper idea. Thirty-five minutes here. Hey, let's go. Huh, here boys? we go. Yeah. A lot has happened since the last time. It feels like you talked to him on here. A legit. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Yeah. Right after the Super Bowl, it's been a long time. I'm excited it's for probably us. Probably been to the dark hole three, four times since yeah. then. Bingo. No, I think. He, do you think he did a couple? That's a question we should ask. Yeah. I wonder how many times. Do he do that? Or will he do it again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that right. talked about in the uh, the Aubrey Marcus? Ar not not really if he'd do it again. If they did talk about it, I missed it. It was more so just like what the experience taught him and and what he got from it and whether or not he enjoyed it. Yeah, maybe he locked himself in his bathroom for if he missed it. Like maybe one day since then, he was just like, it's fuck possible. I'm going to lock myself in my bathroom, turn the lights off, or he put towels hired the, to get the blackout curtains. Bingo, mm -hmm. blackout curtains. For one room of the, we seen his mansion. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. but you got a hard to do in Malibu. <laughs> yeah, see, that's good. Bingo. Because those windows are, I mean, that's floor to ceiling. Oh, yeah. A lot of sun. Or he played that game that we sometimes play where we wake up, we don't open our eyes, and we see how far we get in our day without opening our eyes. No, that's never played true. that. Yeah. How, you don't stub toe every single time? That sounds like something you would certainly be setting yourself no, up. No, I, uh, I proofed it. I proofed my room with rubber all over everything. Oh, because you know, big day tomorrow. I'm playing. How long can I go yep. into my day with my eyes yeah. closed? Okay. That's smart. That sounds like a fun game. Yeah, we should do that more often. Hold on, what happened to his toe whenever he was in the middle oh, of the toe? He said he would. Because he was kind of in the dark there, right? He was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did that happen in the darkness? Because there was a thought there that COVID got to his toe. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why he had a broken pinky toe. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. COVID we lived toe. through this. I'm not making this up. No. Check the tape. This we were getting attacked, actually, for not properly talking about COVID. 
Yes. 19. Wall Remember Street, that? Wall Street Journal wrote an article, yep. I believe, on it. Pretty big. Wall Street Journal, pretty credible source. Very credible. Okay, I'm hoping that it remains that way for <laughs> particular be. cases that I am yeah. a part of. But all this stuff actually happened. He actually has his toe as his profile photo right now on Twitter. Still. He does. Mm -hmm. Like he put That's his profile photo right there because he was asked about COVID toe mm -hmm. whenever he was out for COVID. He has never confirmed with us because I think he likes to keep the thought of COVID-19 being what he was actually going through to people right. in people's eyes. He got up in the middle of the night, had to piss oh, so yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Had to piss so bad because of how hydrated it was. Went to run, lights were off. He railed that thing. Oh, my God. Stubbed it so fucking hard. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whole body. Yeah. 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 It, Nail falling And, and you know, he immediately thinks about football. I assume immediately uh -huh. upon that pain going from pinky toe through spine. Yep. All the way up to brain, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, no. Hurts so bad. Mm -hmm. This is going to fuck up football pretty big. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of uh, quite a standoff here. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, he was in the middle of a uh, vaccine. I ain't getting one. Immunization. Yep. Political. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was in the middle of all of that. And I only know that because I was sitting in the middle of it just getting fucking boom. Yeah. Bang, Ricochet. Boom. Bang. He's not jogged. <laughs> He's a murderer letting his platform be used this way. Boom. That, that whole thing happened. So he has to tough it out now. Mm -hmm. Knows that he just fractured toe having to piss. In the, is that why he went back to the darkness? Because the darkness mm. hurt him so bad. Kind of right the wrongs almost. Is that what happened, I wonder? Certainly possible. Dark. Probably healed the toe. Healed the toe. Dude, Darkness. you know that when you fucking hit your toe on There's the floor. There's the worst. That was obviously what happened to him. Had to have been. He has not confirmed it, though. Why hasn't he? Because he feels like he's not an athlete if he fucking stows his toe, run and take a shit? I don't know, because uh, the game, you know, he missed the Chiefs game Seriously? last year. He came back and played in against the Seahawks at home. You know, it had to have been a couple days removed from that. Had one of his best games of the year. So, but just also put his profile photo back up. Because of all of that, this is what the dude has as his Twitter avatar picture. Like, this is what he, you come to his Twitter, this is what the picture is. This dude is one of one, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, people need to know that. And he's a fucking great football player. Well, yeah, there's man. that guy in England who looks like him. Oh, the Doppler game. That oh, guy's yeah. freaking hilarious. Frank Kirby. That was amazing. Yeah, Frankie. He won two games, right? First one, home run. Second one, everybody was like, all right, enough of this fucking guy. Who no, said are that? they still the same? I didn't say that. A lot yeah. of people are A lot like, of people What is your that. problem? I wasn't saying it. What is your I wasn't, you certainly, I wasn't saying it. Pac, did you hear that? I heard it. I wasn't saying it. A lot of people were saying it, and the TV, you know, the camera guys, too, were saying to me, like, okay, we had our fun. Stop fucking showing this guy. No one cares. What? Okay, I thought the guy had a home run. It was a good run. Yeah. I mean, you do what you got to do. Logan Paul's got a guy that looks. That's right. Looks just like him. Exactly like him. But anyways, Aaron's one of one. The way the Jets fans and players and media have been acting about this, you think all very warranted, huh? You think this team needs a quarterback. That's all they think. But the way, if he looks at internet at all, the way these Jets fans have been speaking to him, oh, yeah. the way they've been, the things they've been offering, he's getting a parade <laughs> if he goes to the fucking oh, yeah. Jets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's getting a par an actual, hey, uh, mm -hmm. hey, uh. there's a couple blogs I've seen from the Jets fan base that's like, I'm about sick of him dragging this whole thing on. It's like, do we know that that's what's happening? Like, is that, do we, are we 100% sure that that is why we still haven't had a decision? We do not know that. Like, gonna find I've, out. We're, there's a lot of things to learn, but that's really the only negative. Everything else from Jets fans is like, all right, set the clock. Tomorrow's the day my life changes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what, that's like yeah. what just, some Jets fans are saying about this whole thing. It's pretty spectacular if you're in Aaron Rodgers' position to get this type of shit, I assume. Yeah, they, he getting everything. The whole city. Mm -hmm. you, heard, you, you, heard, city. You, you can have everything. I don't know if he's going to cut off. Granny Think, did say he would. Yeah. 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 Cut off his yeah, yeah, I don't know if yeah. Yeah. That, but. There was an article written about Greeny from the eyes of his wife while Greeny awaits Aaron Rodgers' decision to be the Jets quarterback. Genius. I think it was in the New York Post. Now, there's an article about uh, us in the New York Post this morning as well. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, I will say, we're in the middle. What would say? I got a lot going on in my life. Mm -hmm. I got a lot <laughs> going on. We got a lot going on in life. I got a baby girl on the way. This past season, there was so much stuff that like off the show had to be dealt with and handled because we're incredibly lucky to be at the position in which we are at. Like very, very lucky that our people watch every single day. But the, it, 
there comes some problems with all that type of stuff too. Like oh, not sure. problems, but like let's say headaches, obstacles, yeah. Yeah. bumps yeah. in the road. Uh, the way like a positive CEO person would spin it. Mm -hmm. There comes obstacles and chances mm -hmm. to get better mm -hmm. and like all that type of shit. No, what it comes with is like a lot of just busy work almost, like time, 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 checked out from life almost. Like have to do this, have to do this. I have a baby girl coming on, uh, yeah. coming into the world. Yep. Here in a couple months, you know, yeah. Like, uh -huh. hell yeah! Woo. I never wanted to be. I never had uh, visions or thoughts that I would be a father because I always said that if I was to have a child, I would want to have generational wealth because I would. I wouldn't want uh, my child to have any of the stresses or anything that that potentially brings into your life. That although you know when people get money, it is not perfect. Life is not perfect when you get money either. A lot of new problems come. I always had it in my mind that I wanted the freedom opportunity. Like, hey, you're not gonna have to be bo bogged down with just surviving to do your thing. So I always had that thought. Never thought that could potentially happen. So I just assumed I'm gonna work my entire life. That'll be my excuse to never have a kid. And I'll just be alone. Like that's literally, I'll just be alone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people make movies about how miserable those people are. For me, it was like, fuck it, I don't mind. <laughs> I uh, have a good time, I'll just be alone. Then, you know, I met Samantha, mm -hmm. uh, my wife, and she would be the greatest mom of all time. Like that's like, I think the human that she is, she would be the greatest mom of all time. And then I, we, we got pregnant and then, you know, it didn't work out and it was very, very dramatic. And then it happened again. Uh, and through those times, I got to experience like, oh, I'm going to be a dad, you know, like thinking about me being a dad. And every time I've fallen in love with the idea that I am going to be able to shape help shape a human mm -hmm. to help society, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you gotta be present. Like, you gotta be around. Like, that is something you have to be. You hear Hall of Fame speeches that every guy in the NFL basically goes in. He says, I apologize to my kids, I wasn't around enough. You hear a lot of successful people that normally say, I wish I would've spent more time with my family. So like, I don't wanna be a person that doesn't spend time with my family, even though I was never that human for a long portion of my life. I've kind of changed the way I view things. So in an effort to make my life a lot easier, I am exploring the options of maybe joining a network or a family, uh, a community that could help handle a lot of stuff that we're running into at this stage. In the sports book bucket is a massive bucket right now. So the fine people at FanDuel who we get along with, oh, yeah. we've been very lucky to be a part of since day one. I mean, we've been the number one sports book since literally day one, illegalized gambling. We've been there through the whole thing, got a lot of pride in FanDuel, very thankful for everything that FanDuel and I have done and maybe even do in the future. But like FanDuel understands that and they have a TV channel, but they do not have a network that would alleviate a lot of the issues that we are currently. So they've been very understanding with us. They've been, we understand your situation. They've been great partners since the beginning. They've been, they're our exclusive sports book. They have zero ownership of my company. Well, they are just our exclusive sports book. That's what they've been this entire time. But I think people have assumed that we're a family because that's how we want it to be. Like, hey, there, there are people. So they've been very open with it. So I've been able to have, you know, some conversations with some places and that New York Post article, I think, is going to... I mean, yeah. I read that thing. I'm like, well, there's already, like, two more places that have... Mm -hmm. Hey, heard this was potential. Mm -hmm. Sports Business Journal. Internet. Yeah, that was bananas. Yeah, they just basically wrote one off of that. Yeah, this is a crazy time. Just mm -hmm. know that it's crazy. I don't expect all this shit. There's, like, over 100,000 people watching right now. That's a joke. Mm -hmm. That is a joke. That is... 140... What? Oh, wow. really? Hey, let's go! Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm just trying to make my life easier. We could have never expected we'd get to this point. We have pushed, because you got to go into an app, you got to find us in an app, mm -hmm. then you got to do it. Like, it's a it's a little bit of a journey, and it, we're not necessarily in a, any deal with YouTube either, so it's not like as soon as you get on YouTube, it's like, hey, fucking oh, watch this show. Thrown at yeah, you. like, that. that is not how this whole thing is. So the fact that we appreciate the hell out of you so much, I am forever indebted into you, but also with where we have gotten to, it would be nice to be able to just live a little bit of a life. Yeah, the life. <laughs> you know, just a, just a little bit of one mm -hmm. uh, because I love my wife and I can't wait for the next stage. So these are just conversations that are happening. Nothing is concrete. We're going to be talking about FanDuel through March Madness oh, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's just this is just because there's conversations 
that are happening where there's a chance that the FanDuel relationship could jeopardize a conversation that's happening somewhere else. And it's like FanDuel has been cool, like, hey, you got to have your happiness m more so than anything. Yes. But also there's a chance we end up somewhere and FanDuel is the thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This will exist, though. Just know that this YouTube thing here, this will always exist. Always mm -hmm. free. Yeah, yeah. It'll always – so know that the show will always be free. Yes, like that is such a great – we have to remember that YouTube yeah. will still cook. Yep. Like, we're in a good spot and when it comes to that. Because the people that watch, I would never want to fucking offend you, to be honest. Because you are doing us a massive favor. So that's why whenever I get asked by the writer of that particular pro, uh, uh, article, Marshawn, it's like, I don't know how easy this is to explain in an answer to you. <laughs> yeah. There's cool. a lot of moving pieces. Like, we have no idea what's going to happen. We know that the show is going to continue to go on. Mm -hmm. We know that we love this show, but I think I'm just trying to have to take some shit off of my plate uh, so that, you know, I can maybe be a better human, better dad, better husband in the future. Because this last football season, my wife's a rock star or whatever, but boy... <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, it was seven mm. days a week. Dude, I, I would walk in here some mornings just like, <sighs> all right, boys, I'm, I'm going to drink like three of these green teas here before mm -hmm. we go live. I'm going to take a five-hour energy. Like, let's go, mm -hmm. you know? And I would utilize you guys as like my lifeline almost. Like, so I very much appreciate you guys. And we're just going to continue going and yeah. doing our thing. But speaking of, the New York Post wrote an article about... COVID, COVID, COVID-19, which mm -hmm. also led to Wall Street Journal. Yep. Him doing that as his picture, I think, is a vital point here that Aaron Rodgers is his own fucking guy. Yeah. Bingo. He's going to do this. I did not expect to get into that whole New York Post article. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I, I, you didn't mean to either. Like, the COVID led to New York Post, and obviously, what were we talking Gotta about? Got to address it. We yeah. have to address That's it, just, yeah. Yeah. which has gotten us in trouble. Like, if a headline comes across the internet, we are going to have to address it mm -hmm. if it's in our world. Yeah, are you going to sue yourself? Well, so that's interesting. There's that is something. Because you did just, there's a chance. I mean, and you might be careful. Samantha might sue you now, too. My wife? Yeah. Don't need that. No. That'd be, I don't think she would. I don't think so either, but I didn't think the other guy would either. You, you, were, right. you were quoted in the article with quotes coming from you, so I don't think you can sue you know, yourself for defamation or anything. That's Maybe, right. though. You, you, know, you were in there. It is 2023. Right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I should think about it, huh? And yeah. I'm going to bankrupt me. You yeah, well, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that'll if you want to go you. down that road. That's yeah. that's where it ends. Well, that's what that's what New York Post articles and Wall Street Journal articles do. That's you know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it leads to normally. It is. Yeah. They stir the pot because I mean, you, you did. Was it you who said you're daring? But uh, how fucking daring are you? That was in, <laughs> that was that was in, that was Andrew Marshawn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was Marshawn no, who wrote that. Yeah, I thought those were your words. Oh, that was oh. a hilarious okay. line. What if I said I'm daring? I'm pretty fucking daring. How daring am I? That was a great description. There. Yeah, that was sweet. He's daring, but how daring is he? That was good. Yeah, That's great right. line. Yeah, read that a couple times. Yeah, I don't know what that means, though. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I've always just made decisions like, well, I want to enjoy my life. Yeah. I would like to enjoy my life. And if we can profit off of it, okay. Yeah. Okay, now we're, now we're having a good time. Can we make the world a little better? Well, I think so. Do we give back? I think so. Mm -hmm. It's like... That's bold of you. That's it's very daring. A daring. daring. You know it's who, uh, daring. It's like, yo, we're just trying to do whatever, you know, whatever's in, we're just trying to take the best path to enjoy life and Bingo. make it for everybody. You know, like that, it's an interesting business plan and model, uh, but it, it is our business plan and model. It's common because someone was like, who's the first person who pops up to you who's daring? I'd say fucking Tom Cruise. I'd agree. Absolutely. Dude, he does a lot of dares, doesn't he? Tom Cruise is like, I dare you when he was a kid, he fucking... Boom. Right away. So, and hey, you won't jump off this cliff? Tom Cruise is like, watch me. Wait, I'll do it till I'm 90, bro. Yeah. What and he saved about? the movie industry, and here you are with sports media. Industry. He won no Oscars, and let's not act like we're doing anything like that with the sports media <laughs> I didn't industry. Say we. That is not, no, me neither. Like, <laughs> that, that is not us. Uh, there's other things that have happened around the NFL, though, before we dive in to the full Aaron conversation. Ezekiel Elliott is allegedly going to be released yeah. Yeah. from the Dallas oh. Cowboys. Remember, four o'clock today, the salary cap has to be made for every single NFL team. $224 million dollars is where the salary cap has to be today for everybody. A lot of old vets potentially going to be let go because the old contracts that they were on might have been paying them a lot more than what the team views their current value, which we don't like as players. We'd like guaranteed contracts if that was possible, but that's not reality except for Deshaun Watson, which brings in Lamar Jackson, but Zeke's contract probably pretty team friendly at this particular stage on what can happen, what can happen, and they're probably going to let him go because 
old Pollard. Uh -huh. That was yeah. a dog last year yeah. for them. Uh, Zeke is still a great player. Zeke still made a lot of hay. Chris Collinsworth went to bat for Zeke on a Sunday Night Football, and he said a lot of people say, like, he doesn't have that Southern Evan accent, does he? Why did I do that immediately? Well, he went to Florida. He's got you know an accent. I mean? Lives in Kentucky. Yeah. He said a lot of you, you say you compare Tony. I'm not, I, there's no reason for me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, his quote was, a lot of people compare numbers of like average per yard carry and everything like that. But Zeke is doing a lot of the dirty work for the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of plays that Tony Pollard wouldn't necessarily do. But I don't think like Tony Pollard's scared to run in between the tackles. Though. Oh, no. Like no, he's no. still doing what he's doing. So although Zeke might have had some plays that lowered his average, they were in a position where Tony did his thing. Oh, yeah. Zeke, though, still a guy. I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But to your point, what type of time is it right now to be a running back? It's a hard time to be a running back. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Ain't no money. No. Ain't no money. Franchise tag is $10 million. Everybody who getting paid, they either trying to get cut or, or trade them. Derrick Henry. I'm, if you Derrick Henry, uh, McCaffrey up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. But who else besides that are you going to pay big money, $14 million oh. plus? You can go and find a running back right now. What's the high school down here? Uh, Lawrence North. Lawrence, North. Lawrence mm -hmm. North. We can go and find a running back, and I'm not joking, but like the running back position is not as vital as it was three, four years ago. Why? Because nope. the offense, the design of the offense, you've got speedy guys back there almost. It's wide receiver combo, tight end combo. Yeah, and it's only a few programs that are really pounding the ball, that are running the ball 60% of the time. 90% of the offense is 3-4 wide, you know what I mean? Quick, up-tempo. Once we get in the red zone area, we'll slow it down a little bit so we can strategically plan our shots. Oh, but nice. Huh? Doing the field, like, it's, it's, it's pick up and go, mm -hmm. almost like 7-on-7. Seven seven. Yeah, the strategy has completely changed. <laughs> I think the way you dropped that strategically right yeah. there was very solid. Yeah. Unbelievable. Because there's another T in there mm -hmm. that's coming. You can see, like, the scat back position is almost more important. Got to be able to catch coming yes. down. Got to be yes. able to get outside the box. So maybe certain type of running back, and then if you start thinking, like, well, those scat backs, I feel like there's a lot more of those types For of sure. guys now coming in to the NFL out of college because you used to not be able to make it because you weren't big enough, mm -hmm. right? Like, need you to be big because you got to lumber, you got to lumber, you got to do that. Now it's like, uh, can you catch how your routes can right. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you learn other positions? It is a fascinating turnover. And you talk about McCaffrey, he's already been traded. Yep. Mm -hmm. He was traded out of Carolina. Bingo. And Derrick Henry allegedly was being traded or allegedly not yeah, being shot. traded. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's real and what isn't. That's why we, all of us can't wait to talk to AJ later. But the running back position, real interesting right now. Yeah, and Zeke, I mean, if they didn't cut him, they were spending $26 million on Ooh. running backs. Like, you can't do that. And no. How many times were we watching Cowboys games where it was like, why aren't they getting the ball to Tony Pollard more? Like, he's so good. And, and that's probably some credit to Zeke because they were working together and when – Pollard first got in the league, he was just that third down scat back. So you definitely learned something from Ezekiel Elliott. But in that offense, like you kind of want Pollard to have those 25 touchdowns. I did as a fan. Yes. And I had him a lot of anytime touchdowns. He's too. awesome. Always. Boys. He's moving, Tony yeah. Pollard. Go ahead, Tony. Well, it's also tough, too, because you hear like Mike McCarthy's comments about what he wants to do with the Cowboys offense moving forward. Like Zeke's kind of getting the, like, the shit end of the stick there because – for a lot of the years he was there, or in recent history here, he was there with, you know, Kellen Moore, and they were throwing it 40, 40 times a game. Yeah, and it's like right. McCarthy next year is going to, you know, want to be running it 35 to 40 times a game. I know i got to run ball because my defense going to get tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what Kellen's doing. I've been there. He wants to light up the scoreboard. He's mm -hmm. offense coordinator. He wants to get a head coaching job. He said, me, I want to look out for my defense. That's what Mike McCarthy yeah, said. Yeah, that defense. And that's probably because Jerry Jones said, last year it was we paid Zeke a lot of money. That's what Jerry said. Mm -hmm. This offseason, he's probably like, you see, we got a new Zeke, Tony. We take. <laughs> we use. Give him the fucking ball. We use him. Yeah, let's do that. And Mike's like, you got it. Hey, you got a boss. Kellen, I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joining us now is a man who knows Mike McCarthy better than anybody. He won a Super Bowl under Mike McCarthy's leadership. Whoa. He also won a college football national championship for the state of Ohio. Damn. He is the. Ohio fuck of all Ohio fucks, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, 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 yeah. A.J., Zeke's on the market. Did you expect that? Uh, I expected something to happen, didn't you? Either like a restructure or something like that. Yeah, because of his age and because of Tony Pollard and because of the way the NFL is currently. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, running backs above the age of, what, 23? It's tough to, <laughs> tough to get a contract, I feel like. They think age. you're washed up, think you're old. That's a young age, 23. Yeah. 
I don't know how many people are just signing up to be running backs. That particular body type could potentially mold into a good D end edge rush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slot. Slot. Linebacker. Yeah. Linebacker, <laughs> which got, a lot of them got signed first day big of money. free agency to yeah. big money. If you can move and you're kind of big, it's almost become like the NBA, huh? Yeah, kind of. A little bit. Like, hey, if you're big and you can move, we got a home for you. You're getting paid. It's oh, yeah. football. Yeah. These tight ends, six, seven, right? That fucking well, guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Darnell Washington. No, also, also that other guy. Yeah, Coons. Our guy. Oh, yeah. Zach, mm -hmm. Zach Coons. He was on our squad. AJ, it's interesting how the game's evolving, pal, right in front of our eyes. Yeah, what do you think? You think you're going to be old school, boring football, like ground and pound? Is that what we're doing? No, I think <laughs> it's like a mixture of both. I think yeah. you, you're getting your ex nice sweet shots. 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 Explosives. Explosives. To quote Coach Gannon of the Arizona Cardinals. Gannon. Right? Gannon. Gannon. What we just did Gannon. right there. I think you're going to get that to get down the field, but then, you know, you're going to have to have some creative run game set up for red zone, I think, because that's where everybody was not scoring, right? Low year scoring. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh -huh. And we, every defense coordinator we talked to that came on the program, which I think was two, mm -hmm. was it one? Lou and Rubo. Coach Lou. That's it. One. What? Yeah, just one person shaped our entire thought. That's, yeah, but he is the, he's he's good, the guy. Oh, yeah. He's Other good. Been coaching for Quarterbacks years. have also told us that, though, too. Yeah. Okay, so look at us. Oh, so Coach Chuck Pagano. Boom, Chuck Boom. Pagano, Boom. defense DC. coach. The new defense is pretty much like, yeah, we'll just let them get their yards. Like, do what you got to do. But we're not giving up the deep one, and then when it gets in the red zone, we hold them to three. Yeah. And maybe the kicker will miss. Like, that is mm – -hmm. that's kind of what it is. Because it used to be just explosives, deep shots, getting beat over the head, boom, 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 trying to make plays whenever somebody's on, you know, their own 50 – or on the 50 or on their own 40. Like, guys are getting greedy, you know, kind of getting greedy, yeah. maybe want to make plays. Now it's like, nah, let's just stay in a shell here. We'll back it up. Let it. Are you seeing that as well? Do you think that's accurate? Well, when you first go into a defensive meeting, the first thing you say is we, we're not – we're eliminating the deep shots. Now, everything else we want to keep in front of us. I think that's any team, though. No one wants to give up the deep ball. If they catch the ball, it's hard to go 25 plays down and score a touchdown. That's why they're, field position matters. Right, and they're tired. You know, and the, the linemen get tired, regardless of what anybody say. And your defensive coach is going to tell you, hey, look, if they get all the way down here, let's at least hold them to three. Yeah, yeah. Three can't beat us. Seven, that beat us. Yeah. yeah, especially if you have a good offense. I mean, that's a whole different thought for some people. Some teams, it's like like the Jets, for instance. Three. <laughs> three, yeah, beat three beat them. Them. We needed a long field goal. Hey, yeah. <laughs> They're only getting 13 today. Yeah, only, only yeah. need that whole thing to happen, which leads us to the topic of the day. I don't know if you saw, AJ. We told the world that Aaron Rodgers is coming on the uh, program today. Did you see this? Woo! Oh, did that happen? Yeah, I wonder why I popped on here 10 to 15 minutes early. Oh! <laughs> oh too. AJ doesn't really pay attention to the internet much. You know, AJ has 10 children over yeah. in the state of Ohio, and he coaches all of their teams, so mm -hmm. he doesn't have time to be plugged into anything but the incredibly toxic stuff on the internet. Sure. Of course. Somehow doesn't know where some of the shit we're but the toxic stuff. So I didn't know if you knew about this or not. This was just a friendly reminder that we invited the world. Come, come watch the program. Come on. Oh. We got a countdown. Okay. Oh. We got 10 minutes, 25 <laughs> seconds, AJ. Four. This is exactly uh, what programs would do. Yeah, oh, what yeah. if he just bailed? What if he just doesn't answer? It would be amazing. Be awesome. That would be like yeah. even better. That would be the Aaron Rodgers move of all he time. Sends yeah. a, he sends a proxy. He sends somebody else. To oh, the Doppler oh, oh, yeah. oh, my <laughs> God. Get Sherby. Doppler. The Doppler ganger. Don't you even mock. All right. Yeah, yeah, come on. All right. Have you seen this? The Doppler dog? I mean, what are you talking about? Of course. You ever seen him? Oh, shit. He's on. <laughs> yeah, what if Aaron does this? Like he's sitting behind. <laughs> Joe the, Nardo, rest sweet. in peace. Rest in peace, Joe. Love you, Joe. Love you, Joe. Joe. Yeah, Joe Nardo is the Doppler dog. He might have created the <laughs> Doppler. He was the Pittsburgh weatherman and meteorologist for my childhood. And the motherfucker was never wrong. Didn't miss. Never. I, I don't know how he did never it. Never missed. So I don't know if Joe Nardo is going to make an appearance on our show ever. Maybe not as Joe. You think Aaron's in Doppelganger? Or what are we hearing here in about 10 minutes? No. What are your expectations for the conversation? Uh, no, I don't really have many expectations. I definitely feel like he wants to get some things off his chest and clear things up. So it should be interesting. Oh, oh. what? Uh. Holy what I, shit! What I would gather going on, yeah, that's what it seems like. He went, he he's got some. Uh, Want to clarify some shit? You're thinking. Oh. Yeah, maybe. I would assume it's oh. going to be something like that. Okay. Okay. Clarify. You know, because I, you know, I kind of pieced together the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I what you think break things down. I write all my questions in sure. order in which Always. they need to be asked. Sure. Yep. I send them to Aaron. 
So I'm going <laughs> to yeah. have to change that in the next nine minutes now that I know that he's potentially going to be. We're here to let it rain. Yeah, that's right. And clear it out. Clear. Yep. You know, yeah. I, I got to change bones. that a little bit. I didn't know that. was. I'm pumped about that. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, uh, okay. okay. I mean, what else could it, could it be? Okay. What could it be? It's got to be some, AJ. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what he knows. That's what I'm saying. Clarification. Stop Maybe some clarification around. on the situation, on what's happening. We will certainly ask him if you have known this entire time. Yep. Half I'm going to let you know that. <laughs> we're going to, we're, hey. I've known what? What's he going to say? What's he going to oh, do? Oh, you know. Uh, uh, now we're already so doing it. Is he announcing something? Did you playing. say it was a big announcement? No, I don't know. It's, I, I was not saying, whoa, Sounds it's an announcement? Like whoa. I didn't say that. No, that's you what I'm just, saying. You acted, you acted like it. And then you showed a picture of him, a screenshot of him in a Jets jersey with a Photoshop. No, no, that was Bill McCombs trying to drum up shit on here. Yeah. That's Billy Tubbs. That was old Bill. Good job. Here's a fucking oh! Holy shit, big news. Bill Safety Jordan Poyer, all pro Poe, is expected to sign back in Buffalo, sources say. He checked out the market but returned to Bill's Mafia. We thought that was always his perfect home because how he has just taken that place in, how great he was on the field for them, and how little notoriety he got for a large portion of his time there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Made his first Pro Bowl this past season, was all pro a couple years before that. Our guy Pac-Man knows a lot about that type of bullshit fuckery in the Pro Bowl voting and everything like that. Jordan Poyer back with the Bills. I'm happy to hear this, AJ. I love Jordan, dude. I'm, I'm happy to hear it. I'm a bit surprised, though, too. Didn't you feel like yeah. it was looking like he was going somewhere else? <laughs> Florida, we th there's 200,000 people watching right now. Everybody needs to relax. Wow. Okay. Everybody, hey they came in for the point this. Everybody relax. The news is broken. Jordan Poor's Porter's back to Buffalo. Going home. Uh -huh. All right, Jordan Poor's going get back to Buffalo. Get out of here now. Hey, Jordan, we're proud of you, pal. Hey, buddy, Jordan. Jordan. What are you going to do? I'm done, Jordan. But, yeah, he said he wasn't happy with the New York taxes. He yeah. lives in South Florida. It felt as if that thing was over. Brandon Bean said, Jordan, let's go on a golf course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's handle our differences. Come here. on. Front nine, we're competing against each other. Back nine, let's see if there's a deal to be had. Have a beer. And, look, they figured it out. He's back in Buffalo. Frazier, defense coordinator, takes a break. Taking yep, a year Leave off. of absence. Yeah. He said he will be back. That's proper term. Leave of absence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, after defense coordinators had already been hired, Jordan Porter was on his way out. It was like, oh, no, are the Bills done? I was told. Pac-Man and Boston Connor think that the Bills window is over already. They still do. Jordan Porter going back change that at all, Pac? No. What is your – oh, what? Buffalo what? Bills. Whoa. Come on. No. The reason he's back because he couldn't get what he wanted on the market. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, I'm eager to see what the deal was, though. But What do you think? What is a well, what is a safety deal? I, have I mean, we seen one this year? Bates just well, got Bates? the yeah. eighteen in the first oh, yeah, two years. Thirty six million or yeah. whatever. Sixty four total. This is the new thing that's been happening. AJ, massive total, and then like guarantee almost like fifty percent. Two year deal. It's usually yeah. a two year, right? Like yeah. two years, yeah. and then the team has an out. Every position but quarterback. Two year deal. Two year yep. deal. Yep. Two year deal. That's Lazard. kind of what's happening. Lazar just got the yeah, two years, deal. twenty-two million guaranteed. It's mm -hmm. basically the pretty much yeah. every human, yeah. every every even D line. A lot of those D line contracts have been you know three year deals, but guarantees in the first two years. Lamar Jackson has the capability to start openly talking to other teams today. I guess mm -hmm. that yep. has been officially announced. Mm -hmm. We assume that started days ago. We were wrong. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who no would have guessed that? That was why he was being talked about, wasn't it? On the internet, it was being talked like he is now capable for another team to come in. We'll see you Give two first rounders. Four o'clock. Do you think he'll have some on the table at four o'clock? It's no way. It's no type <laughs> of player or caliber player as Lamar have ever went through what we're seeing right now. No, agree. I don't think I don't remember this situation no at all. Yeah, it's a fascinating. It's it's a very weird because the thought that he could go to another team and they would make a better offer than the Ravens could match is like very real for the first time in thirty years. Yeah, that, yeah. that last one happened thirty years ago. But one of these rich owners. Could just say, fuck it, here you go. Yeah. And then if the Ravens end up doing it, maybe the Ravens are just wanting somebody else to do the negotiation. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how. I don't know how it would go about happening, but it feels real. Yeah. It feels like it could happen. I would think that all, it, all those teams saying they weren't interested right away is kind of just bullshit posturing, hey, let's get this out there. I would imagine at least two or three teams are going to check in on him today. You have to. At least. You have to. Yeah, that might be the plan. Like, hey, let's let Lamar go and then – Whatever someone else brings, we'll just match it immediately. Yeah, which would be a way to get work off of your plate. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just, all right, you guys want to, you go down there and negotiate with Mr. Jones, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jones, and uh, whatever you guys figure out, 
We'll match it. Yeah. That could be a deterrent too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, are they using that against? <laughs> yeah, because it's going to be very interesting to see what the market is around the NFL. Because like we just like it's hard even as a Patriots fan to think like Bob Kraft would probably give Lamar Jackson two hundred fifty million dollars. Bob Kraft has a lot of money. Yes, he he just gifts like Bentleys and shit to oh, people. Doesn't he? And then, yeah. Then he just oh, like, yeah. gives away, and then he. He's just money, money. He's got money everywhere. He's got a lot of money. He's got like a casino up there, like mm-hmm. a plaza up there. He's got a hotel up there. He's what? got a stadium what? up what? there. They make 50 what? mil every home game. That's And then he has other companies. And he's right. got, yeah, he's got it's a lot of we, we still don't know what his actual contract guarantees were, though, right? Like, so some teams could see that, you know, yeah, Schefter reported all that stuff, 200 in practical guarantees, but 133 million was what the full guarantee was. So could some team come in and give. 200 and then you know with 200 oh, yeah. guaranteed up to 250 like i, I don't feel like the, the, you, are the ravens all of a sudden going to be like eh fuck it we can find you know 69 million dollars somewhere yeah I, I do wonder how they figure that out and what they're willing to go to because in their mind they already have a number yeah yes. we'll go to this and then they, that's what the other owner or team is trying to predict right because mm-hmm. remember in war dogs they were like 300 400 million under that's right that's right the next one mm-hmm. you know so you remember that mm-hmm. joan hill and miles yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude. Yep. it's a great movie yeah they, at the end they find out they were uh they were 300 million <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> jonah what a fucking dog Jonah is. Yeah. Uh, before we get to a break, we have some news out of the New England Patriots camp. Oh, Allegedly, wow. Bill Belichick has reached out about DeAndre Hopkins and Ooh. Jerry Ooh. Judy. <laughs> Sounds like the Patriots are in the market for a uh, wide receiver for Mac Jones. Obviously, they're going to have an offensive coordinator this year with Bill O'Brien yeah. as opposed mm-hmm. to not having one last year. Jeff Howe's breaking the news. You pumped up about this, Connor? No, I mean, fucking sweet, Jeff. Yeah, don't report something that everyone assumes. Can we get some sort of like, hey, they have <laughs> Jeez, made an offer. I'm, about this. I'm serious. Yeah, I would be happy if we were fucking signing somebody. Huh? Cool. They went to OBJ's workout. Knew that. They called about Odell and Judy. Okay, sweet. What's the goddamn art? What are we missing here then? All right. All right. Uh, let's Jeez. get to a break. Okay. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers will be on the other side of this break. Thank you for your service. Jeff, we appreciate Jeff, that. Jeff, I'm Jeff. Yes. I can't I mean, imagine, but thanks. Okay. DeAndre Hopkins and his agent are happy yeah. that you reported that. You gotta be uh-huh. at the dance mm-hmm. together. Connor, too, he just said the shit in the back room. Hey, man, call your boy D-Hop. We really need him for the paper. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I agree. Get an offer done, then. <laughs> Come on. That was like a, hey, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Hey, we're doing stuff. Wheels are in motion. That was a maybe, bro. Why, why you got to be so angry all the time? All, all this is is other teams, okay, shit. Oh, no. Patriots you, are calling. We better are jump dead. in now. You guys are dead. Is that what you're saying? I mean, shit, we're about to talk to a guy that might be playing in the division. So, yeah, <laughs> I would say we're kind of fucked. Speaking of, <laughs> good call, good transition. Let's take a two- to three-minute break. And on the other side, Aaron Rodgers will be here for the first time, long time, a lot to talk about. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. 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 Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, Mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire game if you look at other team sports uh uh, basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years Uh, maybe one player maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, And I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that 
something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. fucking stinks and the fact that you listen we are very very thankful for it. aj never cease to amaze me with your toxicity pal you got a couple of these god damn it <laughs> what the fuck are you doing fuck fucking oh! hello 300 thousand plus live concurrent beautiful people it is Aaron Rodgers Wednesday, March 15, 2023. We start 
now much money to everybody it is a massive time in the sports media world and we are lucky to be here and we are thankful you are watching wherever the fuck you may be the toxic table is here at boston connor at ty schmidt one half of the hammer Don cowboys turn Diggs is here a 14 year nfl vet corner an absolute stallion of a man who's an all pro and a legend in everybody's eyes adam pacman jones is here hey, baby pack Adam, baby pack great work pack Hey boy, Pat. Well. <laughs> to my left, your right is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion, a video game community mm -hmm. shit stir, an NBA pundit, a father of 10, and COVID survivor, AJ Hall. Hey, AJ. Hey. Hey. I don't know, maybe AJ, all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Hell yeah. Speaking of that team, there was a man who's been a quarterback for that team for a long time, mm -hmm. has won four MVPs for that incredible program and organization in the middle of America that has a incredibly prestigious history all the way back to Curly Lambeau and the boys doing their thing where you drive into a city that's within a neighborhood a Home Depot is popping off there are houses on either side of it and you get to an NFL stadium that you've learned about on NFL films with Steve Sable making it the prized possession of the NFL Lambeau field there's a man that's been quarterback for that place for a long, long time. And that place is seemingly in the middle of a transition. Is that true? Where is this guy going to be playing football next year? Will it be in that Lambeau field? Will it be on a beach as a retired man? Or will it potentially be in the city of uh, New Jersey? It's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's in New Jersey. Anyways, the New York Jets. Just out of the darkness, the topic of the conversation, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! What's up, dude? Good uh, afternoon. Good morning here. Good afternoon there. How are you, man? There's, there's a lot going on in your world, bro. I don't even know if you know this or if you've been so locked in. How are you doing? Where are you right now? And what's up, brother? Yeah, I'm in Southern California. I've been, uh, been down here for a little bit now. I was, I'm not right out of the darkness. I was in the darkness for... Uh, five days, four nights in the end of February. So we're a little bit past that now. We're mm -hmm. moving to the middle of March now. Ides of March, mm -hmm. if you will. The Ides of March. Ides of March, yes. Yeah, Today is yes. the Ides of March. Okay, well, okay, go. Ides of March, long ago, but... Um, toga, right? The, the, yeah. A lot of yeah. toga yeah. parties. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. You bet. People are dancing, having That's a good too. time. Sure. Yep. Brute, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot has happened since you come back into the light, pal. How are, how are you with it all? Uh, I've been good. You know, uh, the darkness gave me a lot of time to contemplate everything. I talked about a lot of it on uh, Aubrey's podcast, which was just a few days after I, uh, I came out. Um, but it, it was a great reset for me, for my body, for my mind. and um, You know, maybe be, maybe a little bit longer uh, than I needed. I felt like by the time I got to the fourth day, I was like, all right, I'm ready to Ready to come out. Oh, okay, of okay. We wondered about that. It was an mm -hmm. ex that's an extended period of time. Oh yeah, long time. Yeah. yeah. No light. No nothing. Four days. Jesus. Five days. You said. Well, parts of five days. It's three full days in there. Four nights. You kind of go in the uh, afternoon of one day. Come out the morning of the of the fifth day. So. Okay. So, at what point did you forget what day it was, or did you know what day it was? Is there some sort of schedule? That well. Food that came at six o'clock every day, so I, you know, I had an idea of where, where I was. And you're kind of counting down the nights once you, you know, get to the third night. You're like, okay, I have one more night of this after this night, you know. So that's kind of how you gauge the whole process. But, did you mill towards where the food was coming from when you thought it was about <laughs> time for food time? Like, did you stand impatiently near that thing as the food was coming down, or was it a surprise? Oh shit, food time! What do you think? It's so quiet that you're just listening for that door handle to come up and then you're like, oh, finally it's six o'clock, I can eat. Um, but uh, there's not a lot of sounds in there. That's why the meditations in there are incredible because there's zero distractions, there's zero light, your eyes don't adjust, so you can't even see parts of the room. You have some hallucinations uh, at some point where the room looks different than it actually does and you really got to kind of walk around with one hand out here, one hand out over here, you know, so not bumping into stuff, but... Uh, yeah, I'm glad I did it. Again. Queen's Gambit? Queen's Gambit on the roof? Hallucinating? Yeah. Really? Whoa. Wow. What day was that? What food was that? I'm sorry. Which? <laughs> day, yeah, day three. Day three. <laughs> okay. So is that like the expected time? Like day three, this is when it's going to start I happening? So. I think so. I think so. 
And there wasn't any vitamins or anything. It was all it all natural. So, oh, man, you went in there completely sober into a hole. Down there. No yeah, light. Light. Yeah. Day three, Queen's Gambit, it's taking place. Obviously, we heard on Aubrey's podcast, you got to think a lot. You thought about life, what it would be like as a retired human. You thought about life, what it would be like coming back and playing. We knew that that was a massive thought for you because how much of an investment it is to kind of give a football season, especially now, it's the longest season it's ever been. There's 17 regular season games. Was that a good place for you to uh, gain clarity? And did you know that you were going to retire or not retire soon after the darkness or was that like a real discussion up until recently for you well i think this goes back to the last season when i was planning this trip um where i was at mentally was this would be a great transition into uh, the next chapter of my life um this is you know mid mid to late february um you know kind of uh, uh you know finish the season out uh, you know, obviously we were still in it and still kind of trending. The dream is, you know, you finish things out, you win the Super Bowl, and then you go into the darkness and go into retirement. And, mm. and that's kind of a transition period for you. Obviously, we didn't do that. We got bounced and didn't make the playoffs. So it was, you know, getting away from the, the season, the, uh, you know, frustration, the emotion. And then, uh, you know, just allowing myself to contemplate both the retirement and then coming back to playing and what that looks like. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that time in the darkness. So what does it look like? What did you, uh, like, where are you at right now when it comes to everything we hear about the Jets situation, the coaches GM flew out to see you uh, in Southern California? Where, like, where are you right now? What are we doing? Well, you know, I think that, that there's, again, which is pretty standard, there's, you know, there's some information out there that's true for sure. There's a lot that isn't true. There's some that has parts of truth to it. There's a lot that has zero truth to it. Um, so uh, I, I will say this, you know, for I know because there's probably a lot of different, uh, you know, non-usual viewers today. A lot. Uh, yeah. this, this isn't this isn't a decision day. This isn't me deciding and announcing to the world that this is what's going on. Uh, in fact, that's already happened. You know, we're, oh. we're we're actually days past this. Um, this is kind of clearing things up. I think. Uh, for everybody interested, which there obviously seems to be a lot of people interested. So the the whole, um, and I'm going to get into this now, if you don't mind, Pat, I'm going to go for a little bit here. Hey, go ahead. There's 430,000 people currently, so a lot more people watching than normal, and they are all interested because you're a fucking dog <laughs> as a football player. So go ahead and do your thing, pal. Listen, you know, I, I love you guys, and I, I enjoy coming on. Um but this was, you know, coming on the show was never going to be to announce, you know, I'm retiring or I'm coming back or blah, blah, blah. This is more just to tell you exactly the state of affairs where we sit today on March 15th um, because there have been a lot of changes. The, the, the history of this and kind of the, the timeline, which I think is important, that's why I'm going to go through it, is that in 2020, uh, they drafted Jordan uh, to replace me. Uh, now, uh, there wasn't replacement right away, but... Uh, as is the case with the Packers and, and kind of the way they do things, they like to get rid of players like a year early instead of a year late in their mind. So there's probably some people who believe that I was a descending player and that it was time to make a change, even though we're just coming off the NFC Championship game and obviously we got blown out by San Fran, but we had a 13-3 and season and, and uh, you know, we're the number two seed and, and, and made it all the way to the NFC Championship. Um so they, they drafted a guy to replace me. Now, you know, maybe not right away because they, there was nothing about trading in, in, the, uh, in the media. But even farther back from that, you have to realize I was drafted in 2005 by Ted Thompson. The front office at that time looked a lot different. Front office consisted of Ted Thompson, John Schneider, is now the GM of uh, Seattle, Reggie McKenzie, who went on to be GM of uh, Oakland, John Dorsey, who went on to be GM of Cleveland, Elliot Wolf, who had been in front office for a number of years, whose dad obviously was an architect of the Packers, mm. uh, awesome guy. That was the front office of the Packers. So the front office now looks completely different. You know, there's still obviously some scouts and different people that have been around for a while, but that was the guys who were there when I drafted, when, when I was drafted in 2005. Fast forward to uh, 2020, and when they drafted Jordan, there's none of those guys there. So this is a new regime. You know, the president of the Packers in, in 2005 was Bob Harlan. Um, you know, father of Kevin Harlan, Bob, a uh, legendary guy. I love Bob so much. I have so much love for him. And, you know, and obviously for the organization and for so many people of course. that work in the organization, for the fan base. I mean, I love Green Bay. Like, it's always going to be home. But 
a lot of those people who were there in the beginning aren't there now. You know, again, a lot of my closest friends are still, you know, in the training room, you know, Flea and Nate and Kurt and, and, and uh, you know, some of the old heads and obviously the you know equipment room, you know, what an incredible staff that is with, with Red and T-Bone and Brian Nearing and Odie and Kevin Nelson, who recently retired, but Kevin and Adam in the cafeteria and Doug Collins and Justin Crabb and all the, you know, awesome people that have been there forever. But a lot of people who, you know, were there in the beginning just aren't there as far as decision makers go. So when they drafted Jordan, you know, this conversation would have happened a lot sooner had I not won, you know, back-to-back COVID MVPs. Um, so we come off of last year with, uh, obviously missing the playoffs. I didn't have an MVP season. Um, you know, I was interested in where they would be at, uh, mentally, everything that I was told in the week that I was in green Bay was take as long as you want. And, you know, we want you to retire Packer. Uh, you know, you want to come back and play, obviously the door is wide open, um, so that was the information that I was going that was that I was going on. Now, when I came out of the darkness, something changed. I'm not exactly sure what that was, but something changed. And I got back to my phone after five days off of it, you know, because your phone's not on the entire time. There's no Wi-Fi on that, uh, you know, hippie mountain. Um, and when I got back to that little uh, shack they have where there's a you know one bar of Wi-Fi, I got back to the, you know hundreds of text messages and emails and all different things. Um, I realized that there'd been a little bit of a shift um, and that, that uh, I heard from multiple uh, people that I trust uh, around the league, players mostly, um, that that there was some shopping going on, that, that, uh, that they were interested in actually moving me. At this point, you know, I, I got to admit, I went in the darkness, 90% retiring, 10% playing. That's where my, my mind was. My mind was, I'm, I'm tired of this. I hadn't got back into my workouts yet. And... I thought that that was what was best for me. So I went in the darkness to contemplate a lot of different things, but one day I spent entirely on the, the uh, reality I was retired, and one day I spent entirely on the reality that I was coming back and playing and just really sat with that for hours and hours, uh, what that looked like, what the reality is, how that all felt. And uh, when I came out, I was really interested in what the, what the kind of landscape was, uh, where, where Green Bay was at. And obviously, uh, if uh, I wanted to play, you know, what were the options um, so it was clear to me at that point that although the Packers were going to say the right thing uh, publicly, that they were ready to move on. And I, again, I don't know what changed that or what moved that. If they just said, hey, you know, we need to make a decision here because he hasn't made a decision yet. Um, again, there's no victims here. I'm not sitting here as a victim. You know, I love Green Bay. I love the fan base. They're incredible. I, I live for playing, uh, playing for them and, and, and for Lambeau. Hell yeah. A lot of love for the organization. Um, I just think I wish that in the beginning of the offseason, that had been the conversation. Because I love direct communication. If they had just said, listen, uh, we we think it's time to move in a different direction. And we love you. And you're, all, you're going to be a Packer Hall of Famer. You're going to go in the hall as a Packer. We're going to you know, retire your number, whatever it might be. You know, but it's time to move on. I would have said, man, thank you so much just for telling me that. Like, I really, really appreciate that. That means the world to me that you would, that you would, uh, you would tell me that. Um, because I really believe that's a sentiment and that's fine. It really is. It's totally fine. This is, this is a, an incredible profession, but it's a tough business mm. for sure. You've said that and for I a think, long time, Aaron. You've said that for a long some time. Of these, some of these issues were things I was talking about two years ago. You know, it, it was, it was how do we treat, uh, older players on the way out. And it's ironic that now I'm, you know, I'm that player, but I think that's the beauty in life is, is the, uh, you know, the sense of humor that the universe, uh, that the universe has. But, um, so I'm, uh, no malice, no bitterness towards the Packers. It's been bittersweet for sure. The last, uh, the last 10 days. So I've shifted my focus to entertaining, you know, what the plane would look like mm. and had, uh, you know, uh, the Packers granted, obviously, permission for the Jets to come out and visit. We had a nice visit. Um, they decided to leave their cars in the street, which attracted paparazzi attention, which uh, got, you know, a few of them photographed, which I thought was pretty funny. But um, Made a couple uh, of mistakes early. But we had, a, we, had a nice, we had a nice conversation. And I told them, listen, I'm not ready to make a decision about anything. I want to get back into my workouts and see how it feels. Uh, you know, to really hit it hard for for a week. I've obviously been working out before that, but to really hit it hard for a week and, and to see if the drive and the, and the passion is still there, and and then I'll you know see where we're at. 
And, and so, again, this is why this is not a decision here. The decision, I think, was made in my mind whether or not I was able to admit at that point. Uh, really, on that Tuesday, I wanted to play. Um, and then it was, uh, you know, how is my body uh, feeling? Is it going to be able to hold up? So at this point, as I sit here, you know, I think since Friday, uh, I made it clear that my intention was to play and my intention was to play for the New York Jets. Okay. Um, and I haven't been holding anything up at this point. It's been compensation that the Packers are trying to get uh, for me and kind of digging their heels in. So I would just, uh, <laughs> I think it is interesting at this point to step back and look at the whole picture. Um, you know, my side, love and appreciation, gratitude for everything that Green Bay has done for me. Love, so much love and gratitude and just heart open for the Packer fans Hell yeah. and what it meant to be their quarterback. And also the reality of the situation, you know, like it is what it is. The Packers would like to move on. They've let me know that in so many words. They let, they've let other people know that in direct words. Um, and because I still have that fire and I, I, and I want to play and I would like to play in New York, uh, it's just a matter of, um, you know, getting that done at this point. Okay, people in New York are doing this right now. Yeah. People, people in New York are pumped right now. And I appreciate you laying it all out there. Uh, I appreciate you detailing your side of it, why you feel the way you feel. Now, obviously, there's like 400,000 plus people watching. Not everybody will get to hear that. I hope everybody gets a chance to hear why you are in the position that you're in and also why you chose to come on here today because there's a lot of drama allegedly being built by you, dragging this out. Is this guy doing this? Because the last we had heard, and although you made your decision on Friday, the last we had heard is you were contemplating still wanting to play or do you want to play for the Jets or do you want to play for another team? So you giving your side of it, I think, lets a lot of people that are maybe hating uh, know like, yo, let's understand there's a whole nother layer to this, which is how all the insiders have been talking about it. That layer, are you involved in that process at all with what the compensation is? Are you completely hands off of that and you're just along for the ride with everybody else? Or how active have you been in the whole process here, Aaron? Uh, pretty hands off of that, honestly. Um you know, uh, I've just been focused on working out and, um, you know, taking care of my business uh, out here. Um, you know, I obviously have an agent and, and the GMs uh, have been talking, I'm sure, about that. Uh, at this point, um, you know, like I said, it's my intention uh, to play for the Jets, uh, but I'm still under contract with the Packers, so... Yeah, they got no leverage either. Though I don't know how many people are watching. They're trying to compare this to the Matthew Stafford situation. Matthew Stafford, a part of the trade and what they gave up was because they were taking on Jared Goff's contract that was massive. Your contract would be leaving the team, so take that out of the leverage pool. And also, they've pretty much put them in a position contractually with Jordan Love because they have to decide whether or not they're going to pick up the fifth year. They made this decision by drafting Jordan Love that everybody else knows that they're going to another quarterback anyways, and they don't want it on the book. So it's a vast vastly different leverage situation. I think we all just assume that that would have got done. I think that's why we we're all thinking that it was you. Has this surprised you a little bit as well or no? I mean, not really, honestly. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Why not? Well, listen, you know, I think, you know, my plea is, um, and I would say this is debatable, but I'm debatably the best player in franchise history. I, I'm in the conversation for sure. That was awesome. <laughs> What's not what's not debatable is I'm the longest tenure Packer in history. Like you can debate the first part, obviously Bart, Brett, a number of names have been incredible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But Legend. you can't debate anybody who's been there longer than I have. And nobody has bled green and gold like me. I mean, I love that city. I love those fans. I love that region. And I've never been a free agent. I've never even got there. Yeah, the team has done it, but it's been. I've never said, you know what? Let me test for agency here, like because. I want to, you know, I kind of want to get out of here. Like this weather, or, you know, you know, the, you know, whatever it might be. Just I need, to, I need a new. Never, it was never that, never that. I, I, I love Green Bay. I do love Green Bay. I mean, I love the people. I love going to Chives and, and seeing my buddy Logan. I love India Bhavan now. Incredible Indian Indian spot in town. Hell yeah, that's good. I love my, I love my boy Rob at Frame Makers. You know, I love so many people in that town. So many people that work at the organization. And and I love our fans, man. We got a great fan base. I mean, it's it was never about that. Now it's about the reality situation. 
you know, and I think there's probably people who are really wanting to move on and I get it. I'm not upset about it. I have nothing but love in my heart for every Packer fan and everybody that works in the organization. I'm just, my life is better because of my time at Green Bay. But we just got to look at the reality. They want to move on. They don't want me to come back and that's fine. They're ready to move on with Jordan. That's awesome. Yeah. And I Jordan's going to be a great player. He's a fucking great kid. He had a really good year this year, getting better, you know, on the, on the look team. He's got a bright future in front of him. They got a good young team. I got so many great friends on that team that I'm still going to be great friends with. Um, but the fact of the matter is, like, uh, you got a aging, you know, face of the franchise for the last 15 years that uh, it's time to do do right by. And uh, let's just listen to your language. Mark Murphy said it the other day, right? You know, Had a great career. Yeah. If the only way Aaron would be the quarterback is if what we want to happen obviously doesn't happen. So that's what he actually said publicly, which I think you said if he would have told you that before you were going into the free, this process, this, you wouldn't have been so offended by it all. I, I think when you laid it I all... Honestly, I wasn't offended by it at all. I'm not offended. No, 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 yeah. no. But like the miscommunication-wise, he didn't tell you that was the case. They told you to take your time. And then when you came out of the darkness, it was like a different message. And you said this has kind of been an issue with Green Bay alum for a long time. It's like how you handle the whole next... Well, just look at the track. Look at the track record from the guy sitting over there uh, to All -time you know, what happened with Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb and, and uh, Julius Peppers, Clay Matthews, mm -hmm. Brett Goode, uh, on and on and on. There's just a way of doing things that you don't want to bring it back. That's fine. It's a business. But there's a way of doing it that allows the man to keep the dignity. And honestly, that's some of the stuff I was fighting for a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. how can we do this a little bit better? If we want to be about family and want to be about loving and, and taking care of our people, like let's let's uh, let's put our actions where our, where our words at. That's because it's really important to me. That part is important. And now I'm I'm the person, and, and look, I'm not offended by any of this. I'm not a victim by any of this. I don't have that mentality. I have nothing but love and appreciation. It's been bittersweet. Like coming to this reality has been really bittersweet because I was drafted by Green Bay. I fucking love that city. Love that organization, and always going to have love for that organization. But the facts are right now, they want to move on. Oh, my God. It's right there. I see it. And now, mm -hmm. and now so do I. Hey, do you see it? AJ, do you see what I'm, you see? What's like chips are stacking up the chips? That's right. Stacking the chips on your shoulder. We know. We know that. Hey, quick. If you let's say you came out of the darkness retreat, as you said, what? Five, five days, four nights, I believe. Long time in there. Very long time. Say you check your phone in Green Bay. Was you get your first text was, hey, man. We love you. Come on back. We need this. Would you have been gung-ho going back to Green Bay? I mean, that's a good question. Not really. Um, I just felt like I, I knew that wasn't going to happen, number one. But but number two, Why that just – Why, though? If you, said, if you said when you left at the end of the because season, though. Let me get to it. Because let him answer a question, AJ. Jeez, <laughs> ask him a question. Let him answer it. Thank you, you, Aaron. Sorry about it. <laughs> Jeez. That, that just wasn't the sentiment that I felt throughout the season, you know, especially even towards the end of the season. It felt like everybody was ready to move on. And, you know, I was interested by what the conversation would be in the week after the season, but it was pretty obvious uh, they weren't, you know, they weren't staying on the table. They weren't doing the opposite, though. It was kind of in the middle where whatever you want to do, you know, we'll kind of do. And obviously that changed, and they felt like they had to take a hard line, um, which, which you know, look, nobody wants to be the bad guy in a situation. And, and honestly, there isn't, at this point, a, a bad guy in the situation. Uh, as long as everything gets resolved uh, the right way, they want to move on, and, and, and now I want to play. And, and so that would obviously be me, me moving on as well. So you know how I was saying chips on the shoulder there. I don't know if you took that as a compliment or if you agree with that or not, but Michael Jordan right at that Utah restaurant oh, yeah. we saw in the last dance, mm -hmm. that's all I need that motherfucker to say. And the guy was like, hey, good luck tomorrow, Michael Jordan. Like, mm -hmm. you're the greatest player of all time. And he's like, yeah. yeah. The way he said it, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like, did you, you said you were thinking about, you know, retirement 90-10, going into the darkness because the plan was to win a Super Bowl and do that. Then you come out of there and you chat with the Green Bay Packers, even though they had a different tone. How much of that was kind of a driver to be like, yeah, 
you know what, actually, I still want to go. Or was that something you thought about in the darkness or previously, like if you could find motivation, if you could find another, uh, like maybe mountain to climb, if you could, like, was any of that a thought that maybe you had during the darkness or before that was kind of reignited whenever Green Bay said, we're playing on basically moving on? Or do you not view it that way? No, not really. I mean, I don't think, I think when I left Green Bay, you know, a week after uh, the season, eight days, whatever it might have been, eight or nine days, I felt like that 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 was uh, that that was it. I felt like I wasn't coming back. It was just a feeling. I wouldn't base anything more than maybe on on how they're acting, just on how it felt. Like I just, it felt like this was uh, this was my last time, you know, in Green Bay as as the as a starting quarterback. Um, and then, I, but I was open to that changing based on how you know people responded or didn't respond. Or, um, but you know, there was some conversation around you know what you want to do in the off season, and uh, are you okay if we don't bring back any of your guys? And um, that honestly didn't have a, a big bearing on it. The, it was it was more just a sense that hey, let's just be honest. Like you drafted Jordan. If I hadn't won MVP twice in a row, this would have been a conversation two years before which is totally fine, and I get it. And Ted Thompson, you know, rest his soul, is not there anymore. He drafted me. None of those guys are, you know, who were there other than Sam Seal, who was the West Coast scout, you know, who supposedly stood on the table to, you know, for me. Uh, shout out to Sammy. But um, Hey, shout out, Sam. Shout out, Sam. Shout out, Sammy. Still, he's still there, but, uh, Hell but you know, it's, it's a different regime and every regime wants to have their guys in there. And I totally understand it. I mean, it's a business. Like I'm not, I'm not naive to that. It is what it is. And, uh, you know, I just have a lot of gratitude for the time there, but now it's time to, you know, it's time to, uh, to do the right thing. Cause I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think there's a scenario where they're like, well, you know, we want this and jets aren't willing to give it to us. So we'll take you back. Like, you know, that's not that's not the reality. All right. Over the last uh, couple of years, we've had a book club. So I'm going to make a literacy reference here. You know what time it is? What time? What's that? Turn the page. Ooh. Oh. Okay. See what we did okay. right there? Okay. <laughs> that was also right to a new chapter. And let's it make was. that happen. Okay? It sounds like there's maybe some conversations behind the scenes yeah. between the Packers and Jets that are holding this whole thing up that the fans should maybe uh, send their – uh, direct drama and mm -hmm. bullshit hate too is what I think we just cleared up there. Now let's talk about the future a little bit here. You sent a list of demands. Need you to sign Lazard. Yep. You need to yep. sign Randall Cobb. Yep. I want Jordy Nelson out of the fucking yep. ranch mm -hmm. into New Jersey. Right. I want him on there. Did that all happen? Or, you know, Hackett is the new offense coordinator has had success with all those guys as well uh, whenever he's in Green Bay. But you were getting a lot of the, oh, this must be, because you just alluded to it too there. They told you you're not bringing that back your guys. How much of that conversation has taken place, and how do you feel about the narrative that you have a laundry list before you can do anything? Well, it's so ridiculous. Hey, that's yeah. happening, though. Like, you need to oh, know. Yeah. You need to know that. I know you, like, you're in your house. Whales are probably out there mm -hmm. birthing and stuff yep. out in Malibu. You're working out, doing your thing. This is a real conversation that's happening. I, we don't understand it either, pal, honestly. Well, until now, we did not have a clue what was happening. Mm -hmm. But you get it after all that. You get it. Just ask, ask Schefter what I text him when he somehow got my number and texted me. You know, I didn't respond to Diana Rossini, I think her name is. Yes, like, Diana. You got my Great work. Well. But, like, I would say the same thing that I told Sheffy. Shefty, lose my number. Ooh. Nice try. <laughs> Listen, I'll speak for myself. I'm sure there'll be people that, <laughs> that's, that, you know, have their sources. But... The, you know, from what I've seen, it's like I had a sheet of paper when I met with the Jets and I said, uh, sign these people. And that's not the reality. That's okay. so ridiculous. All right. That sounds it's, good. It's so stupid yeah. to think that I would do it, number one. Now, did they ask me about certain guys that I played with over the years? Of course. Did I talk glowingly about teammates that I love? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Sue talk me. About the guys well, I mean, like. Don't actually. Like, no. Like, yeah, do I love those guys on the list? Of course. Do I make demands about certain people? I mean, it's just, and it goes to this, like, you know, it, it, people want these things to be so true that, like, I'm in this meeting, you know, you know dressed in, you know, 
ceremony regalia, giving them some sort of like no shoes. handwritten on parchment to demand list of people they need to sign. Like, listen, I think objectively, a lot of people can look at Alan Lazard and go, he's a really good player. We would love to have him on our team. And then anybody with a brain would maybe call me on any team and go, hey, what kind of, uh, you know, locker room guy is Alan Lazard? Uh, what's his work ethic like? And I'd say, he's a fucking great dude. Oh. He's a fucking dude. He'd, anybody would be lucky to have him in the locker room. And if somebody asked me about Big Dog or uh, Kabi, or I don't even know who else was on that list, I'd say the same thing. Jordan. Fucking all Odell. dudes. Oh, Odell. Odell. I mean, first of all, who wouldn't want to have Odell on their team? Like, <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, he'd be cool. Like, yeah, come on. But what are we talking about here? I don't have demands. Look, my only demand is for transparency. And, I, and, and, and if you say some bullshit, like, I, you know, there's sometimes it's not even worth it. But, but like I said, you know, I can't remember exactly what the – something that the uh, Rappaport said or some shit. Yes. But, like, when something gets, gets out there and then assumed to be true, then it can take on a life of its own. It can go from, oh, there was a conversation about 20 different players to, oh, he wants, you know, these guys to be signed. Otherwise, he doesn't want to come. It's like, come on. What are we talking about? Here? Yeah, it's all in the delivery of the information. Because that kind of sets it, you know? And that happens multiple times during the day on the internet with every piece of information. Somebody has their take on it, and they're covering it, right? So they can say they cover everything, but they are certainly putting their... How... Well, it's a game of, tel it's a game of telephone. Then it becomes this whole thing, you know? It's like, then I'm just presented in, view it? you know, in a, in a black folder, you know, with specific, to, you know, Helvetica, you know, font that, you know... It's my favorite font or some shit. How yeah. Papyrus is a good one, too. Yeah, yeah. Great I mean, one. that one's Time. kind of, yeah, those are all good ones. Very hard. Papyrus is Avatar, obviously. You yeah, know, yeah. That's the whole thing. Way yeah. right. Avatar, which could be real, right? We don't have time to talk about that. We will uh, move on. Here's a great tweet with a caption. Uh, Green Bay Packers shareholder owner and Green Bay Packers super fan gets chance to ask Aaron Rodgers question on day he finds out Aaron Rodgers wants to play for the New York Jets. Ty Schmidt, your question for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, not really a question, and I'll just speak for myself, but I think I do speak for a, a vast majority of the fan base. Just want to say thank you, Aaron. You know, I mean, it is it really has been a pleasure, a joy, and a privilege watching you play. Like, some of the best memories of my entire adult life are watching, you know, you with my brothers and my dad. Um, it sucks, obviously. Like, I, I wanted you to retire a Packer, but I'm glad you're still playing. Uh, I'll love to continue to watch you play. Hell yeah. So uh, I hope everything that, that you want to happen does happen. And uh, I, I really, you know, again, no malice. I mean, it's it, it does suck, and it's going to hurt for a while. I do feel a bit like Julius Caesar today on the Ides of March. I mean, at oh, two, Aaron. Yeah. But oh, no. <laughs> I get it. Uh, anyone to be pissed about being able to watch you and your greatness over the last 18 years is a fucking buffoon. So appreciate you. Looking forward to watching you. It just sucks you're not going to retire, Packer. Proud of you, Ty. Here we go, Ty. Practice it. You nailed it. Stay strong. Oh. Stay strong. Yeah. Ty, thanks, buddy. That's, you know, and that's why it's been so bittersweet is because um, I love that town so much and I have so much love for so many people I've met over the years associated with that. Uh, the game has given me a ton. I've tried to return that as much as I can, but that town, that region, that state has given me so much love and support from the day I was drafted, which was obviously controversial, to when I took over in 2008 and went in the Super Bowl, uh, all the incredible memories over the years and the fun interactions with fans, you know, at events or just at the store or at a Bucks game or on a golf course or whatever it might be. Like, you know, and you see them all over the place. I ran into Packer fans in Rome walking through the, you know, the ruins. You know, they're just everywhere. And they're just such great people. I, I just have so much love for them. That's why this has been really, really hard. It's been hard to get to this uh, point. And there's a lot of sadness for sure. There was definitely, you know, a, a day of mourning, I think, of just all that time, those memories, the love I have for that place. And, um, but that place is always going to be really, really special to me, as are those fans and the memories. They can't take them away. And look, this is, there's a lot of emotion in this, so I don't fault anybody 
for voicing that emotion, for sharing those things. Um, some people might regret some of them later, but um, probably after listening today. Because there's Packers fans that are pissed off that you were taking forever to make the decision, too, because there was so much money being held hostage and there was t uh, uh, tampering allowed to happen during a free agency. So you were holding them hostage as well. This was all things that were actually being said. I just, I have to, tell, I have to relay the message. I have to relay the message. And I, yeah, I'm sensitive to all that. I really am. I'm sensitive to all that. Um, and again, like, I don't, uh, I don't have any malice towards any of those people um our, our fans are so passionate in green bay i mean yeah and they show up and there's a 50-year waiting list for tickets and uh, they pack that place every single year and they live and die with the packers and it's just there's nothing like it across the league and and i'm just really really thankful i got to be the starting quarterback of the packers for 15 years I got to be an organization for 18 years like 18 years that's a that's a teenager you know that's that's becoming an adult Fine and that's what i did there. Right. and that's what i did there and it was because of the people i met there and the places i went and and the times that i had so man i love you green bay thank you and uh i'm as sad as as uh some of you are but uh you know we'll meet again yeah, hell yeah. Mark Murphy said that well, he'll be in our Hall of Fame, he'll be in the Hall of Fame, his number will be retired, which leads to Boston Connors' question for you. Uh, by the way, it's great to hear you speak like that about a team, you know, and a city and a people. That's cool, because it was very obviously rather heavy on you there, had that moment. Yeah, yeah that's a big it, deal. It's easy because the emotions are real. You know, the tears are real, the emotions are real and the love for those colors and that G and what that meant to me when I, you know, I was told the guys like that G follows you wherever you go. Like, so when you're out on the road, when you're back home, when you're out to dinner, like you're representing an incredible organization. And I, and I said those words and I took those words to heart and, and always uh, tried to represent the G the right way. Also the history of the organization provides things that not a lot of other, not a lot of other franchises can have like the rivalry with the Chicago bears. That you, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Right now, that Zito, he just got, he just had a great last 42 mm -hmm. minutes here. Yeah, Zito has had a fantastic 42 Love minutes. Love you, Aaron. Yeah, he's a, he's a big <laughs> fan as a Chicago Bear fan. But listening to you talk about that rivalry in a game that I think, with what the Bears have been, no offense, ZD. Much hey, mana. Much mana. making much, much big mana. plays. But with what the Bears have been over a big chunk of recent history here, a lot of people outside of that, I don't think, know that it's a massive rivalry. Like, hey, this is the real deal. So getting a chance to experience that the last few years with you and how you talk about it and how serious you take it, it's like obviously you take a lot of pride in the fact that you're a Green Bay Packer because a rivalry that nobody really knows is as big as it is is very serious to you in your 18th year, 18th year, 17th year in the NFL. And you even told Justin Fields, like, hey, take this rivalry seriously. This is a real deal. Carry it on. It's like... You've always been very passionate towards the Packers, man. Always been very passionate towards the Packers. Connor has a question, though, for you about a team that has a passionate fan base and a situation potentially brewing. Yeah, as a Patriots fan, I got to say, you know, thanks a lot, Mark Murphy. You kind of fucked us, okay? You know, he, the guy was going to retire, and now he's going to be a Jet. Really appreciate that. With that being said, you know, welcome to the AFC East. Uh, Aaron, you might have heard Joe Namath come out and say, hey, if Aaron comes to New York, he can wear the number 12. When you're picturing it in your head, are you taking that 12 from the rafters, putting it on your chest, or just for all these jersey swaps? Should we maybe put on like a two? Maybe you're wearing number one. What are we thinking there? Oh, maybe a zero? That might get passed. <laughs> Listen, that's a, that's a great question, Connor. With respect to the uh, emotions, um, I think there'll be time for all those conversations down the road. And today was about uh, talking about the – the past and the love I have for the team and then giving an update on what's going on today. So that's a great question. I've seen what Joe said. Um, there'll be time to talk about that down the road. Thanks, Connor. Yeah, well, yeah. the Jets suck. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Connor, hey, Patriots hate the Jets. I think. I guess that's a thing. You know that. If you, Yeah. All of us do. Bills, <clears throat> Fins, 
Patriots. I mean, the Jets are the Hey, that's, worst. A, that's the kitchen, baby. They want it in there. Bingo. Hey, they want it hard yeah. in there. They've been waiting. Yeah. You're going to get a parade over there from what I've been heard for how long it's Big been. Time. I don't know if you know that. Gary V is going to be at the front of that. He might write a sixth New York Times bestseller oh. about you Greenies coming down. to the Maybe. city. It's going to be accurate Aaron. It's going to be this little yeah. figure yeah. that is in his Amazing. NFT collection that comes and puts an entire city on his back. I mean, there's there's a chance that type of shit happens in New York. This is a whole different market now. Yeah. Uh, Tone has a question for you, Aaron. Aaron, was it was it always the Jets? Was there any other teams that potentially you knew that were were trying to get you? Or was it or was it just retirement Packers Jets? Yeah, that's a good question. I think there were other teams that were interested, and obviously there's um, you know certain players that I have a lot of love and affinity for. Um, and the reuniting with uh, especially one specific person would have been um, uh, Devonte in Las Vegas. You're talking about Devonte Adams. Adams. Not mentioning any names, but uh, there, there, you know, there's definitely one particular guy who, uh, you know, who him and I have this you know, special kind of unspoken rapport. Um, so oh, that's Devonte. Okay, yeah, that's Devonte yeah. Adams. who's currently on the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. If, if yeah. I was a demanding person, I probably would. Whoa, whoa, is that Devonte? I'm back. Yeah, Come I'm on, back. Is that I the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, we didn't know if they were back in the game. <laughs> if there's anybody that. Uh, that I would have uh, wanted to put on a demand list. I mean, uh, if you can incorporate any player across the league, it would be one specific person. But um, uh, that being said, uh, like I said, it was it was leaning definitely towards retirement. Um, that's what I felt like when the clock hit zero uh, at Lambeau. That's why I wanted to walk off with Randall Cobb. Um, that's just kind of what it felt like. Oh, that was cool. Then that's a really cool mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Who's calling um, you? Who's calling you? Oh, this is a big deal. Obviously, somebody got your phone number. That's big. Is that Shefty again? Well, he didn't lose I your number. It's a put on a do not disturb and it goes away. But um, I obviously, love that it does. Um, moon mode. Oh, it's the best. Put so, focus rate yeah. the moon mode. Boom. Yep. Boom. Lay off me. See yeah, the moon mode. I thought that, that you couldn't get another call, but obviously it doesn't work. But um, listen, there's you know a lot of reasons why. Uh, you know, the, the Jets are attractive. Um, but, you know, there's one coach who's been as much to me as any coach I've ever had, and he happens to be the coordinator there. So, um, Okay, so that did matter when it happened. Okay, what, and it ended up mattering, potentially. It didn't matter at the time, for sure. But Got it. Uh, there was obviously, a, you know, an interest from them and just from, you know, quite a few other teams. But but that seemed to be the... Uh, Hackett was at the bottom yeah, of the bottom, remember? Time. Head coach Denver Broncos, we suck. He's out of here. Now he's offensive coordinator for the Jets, and it's like Aaron's like, you know, really interested in the New York Jets because the guy that they just hired is the offensive coordinator. Good for Hackett, Let's bro. Go. Good for Hackett. Good boy, Legit, you have, obviously you have a great affinity for him, and we talked about him a little bit this season with how the season was going with the Broncos in his first year as head coach, and you spoke glowingly, glowingly of him, and not that you ever don't speak glowingly of people, but like it felt like that was a genuine emotion because of, I think, his family and the whole lineage and the success you guys had with the gold zone. So much positive was said about him by you that when the Jets hired him, Everybody was like, oh, this is the Jets trying to recruit Aaron. They're hiring Hackett yeah. in an attempt to get Aaron Rodgers here. So you saying that, I think there's going to be people that are like, Woody, Salah, boys, chess, playing it. Good pick. Playing it. Well, well, listen, listen, listen. I take it, you know, if there's any offense I've taken uh, today, the only offense I'm going to take is to that statement, honestly, because okay. That, okay. That, that actually uh, diminishes the ability that he has to coach football and connect with people. And Got it. that is, to me, a fucking objective reality that anybody who's been around Nathaniel Haggard knows that he brings a lot of energy, a lot of fun. He's an incredible teacher of the game, especially the quarterback position. And uh, he's a really good human being. So uh, if it's, you know, for people to say that that was done just in an attempt to lure me, like, um, is a total disservice to Nathaniel Hackett, what he's accomplished in his career, the kind of person that he is. And so I take... Uh, you shouldn't. I it was it was all a compliment, I think, by people. Back. But I it, push back that every time because he's not just a fucking great human, but he's a great football coach. And if Robert Sala can understand that and Woody Johnson can, um, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it, they, there was not... I, I mean, you can ask them, but... 
uh, for them to do it just to attempt to lure me is a disservice to that organization in general and, and a disservice to Nathaniel and what he's accomplished in this league and, and uh, the kind of person that he is. Woody, Woody Johnson and you? Oh, never mind. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Uh, have you thought about what the next like three or four months look like? Are you thinking about uh, – have you uh, talked to the Jets people about taking part in the offseason workouts? Do you want to get up there and throw to those guys or what? Well, listen, again, it's one step at a time here. Right now I'm still under contract. So um, all I've said today is, is I, I do want to play, and I, my intention would be to play for the Jets. Um, but until the trade happens, uh, I think we're still at that step. You and Woody, how'd it go? Because huh? we all know, you know, yeah, he knows, you know, we know, they know. Yep. Uh-huh. He, they, and they, the whole, how'd it go? 11 hours? Is that right? Is that an accurate description of how long you guys met for when he flew out? No, that's not accurate. Um, okay, thank it you. It was pre-daylight, was pre-daylight savings. Uh, they walked out about just after sunset, which was probably shortly after but six. They arrived at the house at uh, two, so six minus two, carry the one, would be about four hours. Wow. Okay. Is that... Set. Is that one sixth of a day? Seven hours of travel, maybe. I think. What'd you guys do? They, they had lunch. Oh, oh yeah, What'd three and a half the, out there. They landed and had lunch. <laughs> three and a half back. And well, quicker back. They, they had a good back. tail oh, strength. Yeah, yeah. Tail they had a you tail guys do a bunch of yeah. psychedelics out there? Yeah, did you guys do ayahuasca together? No. We did didn't. you guys get vaccinated together? Huh? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do that either. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. We didn't know. There was people speculating. Yeah, you're not all in on Woody. Uh, Pac- <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Did, what did you think? Was that a fascinating convo? Four hours? Did you get to know him, you feel like? It was a very relaxed conversation, and it was easy conversation. It wasn't just, obviously, Mr. Johnson. It was... Uh, Rob was there, and Nathaniel was there, and the GM, Joe, was there. I made the money guy was there. So there was more than just that. Um, there was a uh, good conversation, though. It was very easy conversation. Um, they ask you about ayahuasca? <laughs> no, there wasn't any of that. Darkness? I darkness? I would have told them. Yeah, I, told them about the, I told them a little bit about the darkness. There's more Rob. Rob was interested about that. Um was there any return stories? Like, oh, I went to boom, you know? Like, is there any, was there any, did we do a, a whole roundabout table talk here of uh, our experiences? Like, do you feel like it's a good match over there? Because I think that's a big deal, isn't it? Don't you? I think the, ma- the match is important. I think there's also a sanctuary of, of uh, solace that uh, surrounds my house where what happens inside it uh, and some of the conversations need to uh, Oh. Uh, to be given the proper right. uh, the proper privacy. Sure. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. That's why you're Aaron Rodgers. I am not. Pac-Man has a question for you, pal. Uh, yeah. What's there up, we bro? Go. How you oh, doing? Five draft, oh, five. Oh, yes. Hey, I want to know more about this darkness. It sounds like a fucking jail cell to me. <laughs> <laughs> like a holding cell. I don't know if you've ever been locked up. <laughs> I've been locked up before, and it's a holding cell where you can't go out. It's dark and... Um, they slide your food through. I want to know more about this darkness thing. Can you explain this to me? Because my son wanted to come, and I told him last night, I was like, if you can go in here and stay in this bathroom for an hour and a half with the lights off, with this A-Rod jersey on, you can come with me. This shit don't only last he didn't like 20 it. minutes. He didn't make it. He's not here. He is not here nope. today. So can you explain a little bit more to me oh, about this? But I love you. I love you, Pac, man. You're such a here. You're one of one, my friend. Yeah. Um, As are. Listen, there was a lot of people who were asking about that. The, the reality was the door was open. So anytime you want to go out, you can go out. I talked to a, a good friend who had been in about 10 days before me, and he decided every single day he was going to go out for a half hour or an hour just to kind of reset. And so that was an option. Um, but when I blew the candle out uh, the first uh, <laughs> afternoon, that was that was it for the light until – uh, I saw the lighting at about uh, 9.30, I think, uh, more than that came out. So um, I enjoyed it. It was. Uh, it makes you be very intentional about everything. Everything takes time and intention. Walking to the bathroom, uh, finding your way, uh, you know, through the room to the bathtub to start the bathtub, waiting for the hot water to come on 40 minutes later, and then waiting for it to fill up for 40 minutes, and then knowing you got – 15 hours left in your day so you got to find time to fill that up and 
then eating is very intentional. You know, the slow bites and slow through and, and enjoying the time. smell. The smell. You got a lot of time. Um, but what it does is allows you to contemplate everything. And when your mind really slows down to where you don't need as much sleep, which makes you sleep less, but you're not tired. So you have even more time for contemplation. But I found that the, the thoughts during that were very linear. It was basically one thought, and then that ended, and another thought, and that ended, and another thought. So that was nice where in, in modern-day world, even this conversation probably, many of you are thinking about 20 other different things. Should I am probably too. But that's oh. the way our minds work because we have so much stimulation and stuff that's hitting our eyes and light and, and things to look at. In the darkness, it's it's pitch black, and you don't even see. It doesn't. Your eyes don't adjust. So it's you rely on your other senses, and and it's just a lot of time to really contemplate. And meditations were really nice. Um, and I kind of had a theme of the day that I that uh, I asked for in a morning meditation, and then kind of sat with that theme throughout the day, and and kind of lived in that reality, and and really enjoyed it. There was the last day, you know, like I said, I, I was ready to get out. You know, maybe I was like, okay, I think I've thought enough. Um, but I wasn't miserable. If I had been miserable, I would have walked out. I wasn't miserable at all. I just felt like, okay, it had been, you know, 72 hours. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm ready, to, ready to come out of here. To Pac-Man's thought, I think a lot of us, as you were describing it, were very confused about why you would seek this type of thing out. But then you, obviously being a human who is not worried about trying to find uh, like a level of swag or cool, just your own inner happiness, it feels like, is what we've kind of learned from it all. So when you go in there, though, like I was still, I think even all the way up to it, I was asking a lot of questions, as was AJ. We found out in the Aubrey Marcus thing, two wipes, you think, every poop was? Did you have to smell? You had to Impressive. smell? Is that how, how'd you get through that whole... Or did you just guess? It's just a feel, man. It's a feel. I think oh, you yeah. can all tell. Is there, is there some remnants left you got to get or or not? Uh, like I said on there, there was some real solid ones that oh, really? not, not exactly the phantom, you know, the ghost poop where you don't have to wipe. Um, oh, but uh, cool. I had one of those this morning. Yeah, cool. but I felt you know I felt pretty good. It was eating you know a lot of roughage. I think that was clearing me up pretty good. Okay, well I'm happy you had it all figured out in there and. Uh, I'm thankful that you seem to be at a place where you're excited, motivated, and just waiting for the next step to start with somebody else in control of that. So we appreciate you taking time out of your life. Last one before we go, because this will be talked about here probably for the next hour or so. When did AJ know exactly what was going on and how long has he been lying mm -hmm. to the entire world if you had to just guess, you know what I mean? I'd say he probably knew last Tuesday what I was <laughs> oh thinking. Oh, my yeah. God. Yep. Son of a bitch. Wow. wow. You? We thought so. <laughs> hey, he's a real one, Aaron. Keep him around. Yeah, he's a yeah, real. He, yeah. he, we're talking. We're putting his ass. You he, piece of shit, AJ. <laughs> he didn't lie, though. Hey, he is not lying. We told that. that yeah, I, give yeah, you exactly. my said it. I give you my opinions on what I think he's going to do. You know that. Yeah, but then you always, whenever we're gathering around, you have a cigar in your mouth. I don't and know. Holding <laughs> the back of him. You, I never lied. I never lied. I never lied. Wait, the whole, I mean, that is, that is like waiting to happen. You know what I mean, Aaron? No, listen, listen, let me redirect this because uh, I love AJ and I don't want to feel the wrath of Laura or anybody in that family. But uh, I think there was definitely, uh, I gave him plausible deniability. So I, I oh. he didn't know okay. exactly what I was doing because I knew that he had to talk about it every single day. And I, again, I wanted to go through the last week of training and see how I felt. I felt really good all week. And, Body felt good, and um, we're spinning so it. Hey, you old fucks, right? That's the big question. Can you yeah. still throw the ball? Like your brain gets better, but the arm can't keep up. You've never had an issue with that. I'm, I'm assuming last week you tested it pretty good. And did you have a couple like, oh yeah, he's fucking back? Did, yeah. Is that what happened last week? Did we have a couple of those? Yeah, I was back in the very highly competitive. Uh, oh yeah, charity flag football game. If you remember. I do the kid pick you off again? Yeah, you hit the kid with the ball after he picked you off, yeah. right? Remember that? Oh, yeah. He also said golf was the 15th ranked quarterback. That's right. Uh, no, I didn't uh, Didn't throw any picks this year. It wasn't nice. Had a, had a nice, clean, clean run. Liner won that. Shout out, shout out to my boy Tim Vizzy, who just absolutely balled out again, and his brother Matt. Just had a baby Tim, Matt. Hey, boy, Timmy, the Matt. Dizzy brothers. Yeah. They're doing their so thing. We did, not, we did not win. Matt Liner, uh, his team ended up winning. And they had two of those kids from last year. One of the kids that picked me off. So, hey, championship kid. So you remember the exact play 
that that kid picked you off for sure. I mean, no, he I did a little show. He was supposed to go this way. He didn't. He he's a great. He's a great kid. I I need to put him on my demand list. I think. Bingo. There That's a great way to end this thing. We appreciate. He's only in JUCO. He's only in JUCO right now, but I, I put him on there. How many years has he been out of high school? Might be legal. Get yeah, him in true. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows? We might be able to sneak him in the back door there, especially to a. Jets franchise that's ready to go. They got a top five defense, Pac-Man. Yes, sir, they do. Hey, you got Pac five, uh, top, top five defense, says Pac-Man. They got Brees Hall, who, if you wouldn't have got hurt, offense rookie of the year. Actual offense rookie of the year, Garrett Wilson. Mm -hmm. Offensive line, right? They invested in the that's offensive good. line. Uzama, they grabbed. <sighs> so. We'll see. Hey, we'll Delano. see if a trade gets done. Yeah, I hope, I hope that a lot of stuff was cleared up. And oh, okay. again, I like speaking for myself. Anybody, you know, the, the, just consider the sources when it comes to me. I will say, there's a couple of people who've had some things uh, that have been right, um, and it's been uh, surprisingly some of the uh, professed Jet fan commentators. But um, but everybody else, I, and if somebody gets my number, just a little. You know, heads up to them. So. I'll send you the same response, either no response or the response I sent. Yeah, so Schefter oh, tweeted Schefter. it. Schefter tweeted it. Yeah, Schefter tweeted the photo. There it is. He said, uh, Aaron did not lie. There it is. <laughs> That's confirming. Lose my number. Good try, though. What a hilarious text you sent yeah. out, Schefter. What did he text you, though? What did Schefter text you? I can send. I can do that if he wants to put my text out there. <laughs> well, he was just confirming your story, I believe. He was just saying that yeah, he dunked yeah, he on himself. Want, he doesn't want that, does he? Oh, that's hilarious. You're <laughs> you're an absolute beast. Can't wait to see what happens next. We appreciate the hell out of you, brother. This is a massive day on this program's history. Yes, Huge. Look, we've done a few of those, and uh, you know I'm a loyal person, which is why this has been so hard because I love my Green Bay people our fan base, uh, my dear, dear friends at the organization on every level, my friends in the community. Um, and when it comes to loyalty, I'm also loyal to you and the boys and obviously age and his family. And you guys have been a great platform to talk on. And that's why I wanted to come on here and hopefully clear some things up for everybody. So we love you, uh, bro. I love to everybody out there, nothing but love and appreciation and, and uh, everybody take care out there. And, uh, Hopefully uh, there'll be some uh, some uh, movement moving forward, and we can uh, get on with our lives. Ty still Ty still throwing it. Just want to let you know that. And uh, hell yeah, love you, Ty. hell yeah, love you too, Aaron. Love you, Aaron. Hey, uh, sweet ring, sweet ring. On sweet, right two of them. I think I saw two of them today while he was talking. I, I I'm happy we brought that up. You got some really cool rings on today. Dude. Flopping around. Wow. Hair looks. Cool. I have one ring and one watch. Oh, zenith. That's one ring. That was three rings. No, that's one ring. Is that a Super Bowl? Is yeah. Albert coming. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's all about royalty. What? what? I don't know. He's with his travels, what he's been doing. Yeah, of course. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> hey, thank you for allowing this to happen today. We appreciate you. So much. Obviously, you could have done this however the hell you wanted to. You could have handled this in a variety of different ways that a lot of people would have probably told you to do so. You doing it here and you being the dude that you've been to for or been to us. Like we are so thankful and grateful. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. Yeah. Just want you to be happy. Literally. That's all we care about. Massive respect. I am. Good. I am. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right, take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get to a break, and then on the other side, we got to react to all of that. Boom. Woo. Oh, I already have it. Mm. Accurate Aaron for Pat from Gary V. This thing's going to be for sale. There's only going to be a few of them. Yeah. Oh, Make sure you yes. get it. Hey, what what, do, you what do you mean? He's sending it to you, one of one. One of one. That's worth, yep. I don't know, $600 million? Uh, why do you put a nutsack on his elbow? His elbow looks sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weird yeah. i mean that is it's a, a quick sketch dude that's, a, that's that elbow that gary uses to elbow people in the head when they're going off for a dunk oh yeah <laughs> no free layups he says yeah uh -uh. no free layups no free layups this is gary v's paint and speaking of paint that looks like it's done with a pen yeah thank you gary <laughs> thank, thank you gary. gary no flubs no flubs dude that's one he, that was one you know those things where you got to keep the pen yeah, yeah. on the thing yep he actually that's what that was he knows too look at him spinning it without the laces
Oh, <laughs> yes. He knows yep. he's so big. Exactly. Out. Especially up there in the AFC East. He says, this man don't need no fucking laces. Nope. <laughs> should have put a little uh, long he, johns on. Yeah, he should have. That The long johns, Aaron. You know, when that mm -hmm. long john comes out, the other team is... Fuck. Yeah, I think they are on actually. If you look at his left yeah. hand, he's oh got that little God. line there. Oh, yeah, because yeah, wow. he's palming that ball. Actually, he's actually throwing that thing like a basketball. Yeah, just getting it out. That's a new one he's been working on. So you can't see the palm on the right hand. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I guess the left hand's where we see the long johns kind of cutting off. Yeah. He thinks of everything. Where the hell's his feet? What's it? He's got goatee a little bit, right? Planted firmly in the ground. No, that's that's just his. That's his hair scruff. on the other side, I think. Oh yeah. No, because look on his chinny chin chin. That's chin. his hang time. That's a hang time coming out the back of his helmet. Mm -hmm. He did get a haircut. This is actually old school. Right. It's a throwback version uh, yep. yeah. of Aaron here. COVID year. COVID year. Cool Aaron. Yeah. Last year, Aaron, right? A lot yeah. of. Yep. Yeah. Why is he wearing a mane. belt buckle on his. That's old school, bro. Okay. That's old school football. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. know anything about that. No, Jeez. no, I don't know belt buckles. No. Oh, this younger generation is disgusting. Yeah. Anyways, thank you, Gary. Hey, baby, thank Gary. Gary. All right, we'll get to a break, and every human is talking about it over there. Can't wait to hear what everybody's saying, uh, what he said that we might have missed. What did we let slip through, uh, through the cracks that everybody's talking about? Feel like he said everything about everything. Yep. Yeah. Wants to be a jet. That's wild. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Take five. 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 Hey, that ain't gonna help, Miz. That ain't gonna help. That's gonna do nothing. He was a three-sport athlete at Plum High School, where his volleyball team was in the mix for a Section 3 title. Yeah! Yeah! This is his Tahoe debut for the brand, Pat McAfee! Yeah! Aaron Rodgers! Hey, baby. AJ Hawk! How about AJ? Okay, here we go.
Our American Century Championship coverage rolls on here from the back deck of Edgewood Tahoe. How about Pat McAfee stopping by, man? fresh, my mind clear. Like, I'm gonna go do it tonight, I think, you know? Like, I'm gonna go do it. 77,899 people going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. Well, this is a big night, because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could, we will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here! Pontius is here! Party Boy is in WrestleMania! Pontius' cheeks are out in WrestleMania! Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn! I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at! Weaver! Weaver's here! Weaver's here! Punches and punches from Weeman! Wee Man's so angry! Oh, look at look at look at look at look at look at this! Body slam! Wee Man! Body slam! He's Sammy Zay! Wee Man used to kick himself in the face! Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay! You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million That's times fine. in my That's mind. Fine. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. Let's walk to go and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to I wanna see Pat McAfee tonight.
dreamt of being Steve Austin. I dreamt of being in a building when that glass breaks and all of a sudden the toughest son of a bitch on earth comes out. The fact that I never got to see him as a kid, uh, then I get to watch his last match live, it was just, it was awesome. Welcome back to Aaron Rodgers Wednesday, March 15th. FanDuel is live in Massachusetts. New customers can bet $5 and get $20 in bonus bets guaranteed. Check it out at FanDuel.com slash Mass. FanDuel has a special Massachusetts Super Boost for the NCAA Tournament. Bet that one point is scored in Maryland versus West Virginia, tipping off on Thursday, 12.15 p.m. Eastern. Max bet $50. Hello, baby. Congrats, Mass. West Virginia also leading off March Madness uh, tomorrow. Can't wait. West Virginia, Maryland. And then West Virginia's going to beat Maryland. And then they got Alabama. Uh-oh. And then they got the best player in the country named Brandon Miller. Yeah. And he's the best player in the country, I guess. Mm-hmm. And West Virginia's going to beat them. And then probably running into Texas at some point. In. They'd be in the national championship. Yeah, like that. Texas oh, is. Hey. Bob Huggins still there, right? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're a tournament yeah. team. They are a tournament team. Bob Huggins runs a tournament outfit down there. That Texas team, though, that I've known literally since last spring, you know, and kind of yeah. watched them kind of come together. Day one. <sighs> hey, they're built for it, aren't they? They got the guys. Yeah, they got a tough matchup got fun fact the for Elite you. Eight, potentially. But, uh, oh, who's that? Uh, Iowa. Hawkeyes are fucking <laughs> hot right now. What were you going to say? Huggy Bear is the second best against spread record in uh, the first round of the tournament of all coaches in the tournament. Oh, so guess what we're doing tomorrow as a team? What's that? Sounds like we're hammering West Virginia. Be right on West Virginia. <laughs> okay, let's go, Dobby. Hey, you. Yeah. Be Maryland old rival. Be That's down. way back in the day. Yep. That's AJ Hawk. Pac-Man Jones is here. The Toxic Table is here. Tom Diggs is here. All the boys in the back are obviously doing their thing. Aaron Rodgers was just here, AJ. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Clearly said, I would like to play for the New York Jets. I want to be on the New York Jets. Uh, I've made that clear since last Friday. I knew from the Tuesday afterwards when I read the email and the text messages from the Packers that kind of changed their tone from before the darkness to after the darkness. (laughs) And you just saw him getting his spite built up. He's like, all right, okay, let me go see what I can do. Has a week. He's a great week. Now he's waiting on the Packers and the Jets to figure out a trade. Is that what you got out of that conversation, AJ? That's what it felt like, yeah, because I, I'm sure he's hearing the stuff saying, hey, you're holding two teams hostage by doing all this. And he's saying, no, I told him Friday I'm good to go. And now they're still trying to figure this out, whatever the holdup is. Pac-Man, what you hear from that conversation with Aaron there? I, I know this one thing for sure. He let it know it's, it's not his fault. He's, yes. He I, I signed, know. He, he signed the con- – oh, well, haven't signed it yet, but he's ready to cross the T's and dot the I's. From Immediately. How about him saying, this is not the decision because the decision is made four or five days ago. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, oh, we missed it. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. wow. they're acting like that's <laughs> – did, did we miss it? Where, yeah. where did it slip? There's been things that have sl- kind of slid through the internet that we haven't seen. Not a lot of things. No. no. That has gotten us in trouble. Yeah, too many Time things. or two. That has gotten us in trouble because normally if anything, you know, so I guess he was just trying to keep it pretty private and kind of keep it tight and then let it all kind of take place. And then when it's about to take place, announce it. I don't know. What was his plan, you think, AJ? What was the original plan? And nobody would find out about it, you think, or how? Would find out about what? Like he that said he, he made his decision last week, right? Didn't he say that on Friday? He, yeah. I, I, would, I would assume that he probably thought, hey, if I, if I told him, hey, let's do this, then it would happen pretty quickly, and now all of a sudden, every day that goes, people are blaming him, and he's probably saying, hey, man, I, I'm good to go. I'm not sitting here telling him anything. I said I want to play. Yeah, that's what they're acting like. Everything you read on you know, the television, at least until today, because yesterday he announced he was coming on, was that they're waiting for Aaron to make his decision if he's going to play or not. So we he, thought that was the same. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what his decision was. Honestly, that was just kind of the known thing. Is like yeah. Aaron's still taking his time, and we were wondering – because the way yeah. money was being spent and what everybody else was saying, we, even the people who I think 
you know, we're pretty team 12 people. Like, mm -hmm. yo, Aaron's done a lot for us. We know Aaron. We appreciate Aaron. There was numerous times where I think you could even sense it from us, like, thought the decision, would, like, thought it would have had to have. Sunday. By this point, we would assume, like, if you really want to win, like, this feels like this should have been done. Like, kind of, we were starting to feel that and almost having to have that conversation. And then it's nice to hear, like, no, Friday. This is days before the tampering period even tips off. Mm -hmm. Conversations can take place. The right people knew. Did he say that? Did he say the right people knew at that point? He, well, no, he said a couple people put things out there that or they were kind of had an idea of what was going on. Who was he talking like Trey Wingo? Is yeah, that probably. Saying? Probably, yeah. Wingo had a couple things. He was dialed in, yeah. in a couple different yeah, situations. But even on like Monday, um, you looked at some of the reports and and it made it seem like, you know, nothing had been done yet, but that retirement was still like an imminent possibility. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Like, there, there was no like, Which, hey, he is playing next year. He has made it clear he wants to play for the Jets and now the compensation hang up. Like that wasn't the story on Monday. Hey, did you know 90-10, bro? Going into the darkness, retirement to play. No, I didn't. I wonder how we thought that. Like, I wonder, like, how do you come up with that in your brain? Thinking, yeah, I'm about ninety percent. I'm out of here. Because probably the ten days yeah. leading up to the darkness, nine of those days, he said, "I don't want to play. Now. I want to play." And you it. asked him, so like, did, when you came out of darkness and found and like realized, like, hey, that's something. He's in his words, something had changed with the Packers. Like, did that fuel you to to play? Because that ninety ten is a strong number. Had, yeah, it's a heavy lean. Yeah. Had to. Well, that's what I asked. I said, in the darkness, were you like, if I find another motivation or another, you know, something that gets me eager to go, I'll do it. And then he reads the first couple emails. These motherfuckers are trying. And that would be a universe sign, too. Well, and even before that, it basically sounded like he knew all season that, hey, yeah, like, they're going to give lip service yeah, to the media don't. and say everything right. But, like, this feels different. I think this is probably my last year here. Like, even I had no indication of that all year. You know, everything you heard was you thought he – after signing that deal, like he's probably going to finish his career with the Packers. I'm happy you got to have that moment there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it, you know, good, good uh, kind of moment of closure. Good for you, Ty. You know, hell yeah. And Jordan is ready, he said. Jordan's ready. He's a good yeah. kid. Well, Future's yeah, he's like... not going to shit on Jordan Love on his way out the door, though, is he? Well, Jordan Love, we need to remember, not his fault. He likes no, Jordan at all. Honestly, he said positive things about Jordan from the day he got there. Yeah, for sure. Jo he, we all acknowledge the situation. Not Jordan's fault. At all. No. You know, just like it wasn't Aaron's fault. Aaron fell in the draft, mm -hmm. and then he gets drafted to the Packers, and they're like, we don't fucking want this new guy. Oh, yeah, he's like, bro, pissed. you think I want to be here? I thought I was getting drafted number one overall. I want to play. Me and Pac-Man were supposed to get drafted right next to each other. We are supposed to dap each other up mm -hmm. on the stage. Mm -hmm. Like, we were supposed to say, and I'm way down. I don't want to be here. And then it's like, I think he legitimately thought that as well with Jordan. Like, consciously. Was it everything positive that he says, or everything he says about Jordan was super positive? Don't even want there to be a chance for a narrative to be built that he doesn't like this young whippersnapper in his quarterback room, which is a huge deal, I think. And things obviously changed because he did win those MVPs, but he's absolutely right. Like if the Packers would have coming off that NFC Championship, if they go nine and seven, I don't remember if it was the seventeen uh, games that year, but if they go or if they you know go eight and eight or whatever, like they would have ripped the Band-Aid off and done it then. Like, they absolutely would have. What's up, Tom? It was, it was all, that was all awesome. Yeah, The was. convo? Yeah. yeah. I got a lot of people telling me it wasn't, man. Now, great. Now, a lot of people are super positive, but my professionalism gets called into question so often. I just, you know. We asked everything. But what, what didn't we, we ask? Asked. What didn't we ask? Even asked about Woody Johnson. Bingo. Yeah, we asked, did he get vaccinated? Yeah, but a lot of people. We did it in that. our fashion. <sighs> And if you type out our words, though, we said it. Now, when yeah. you type out our words, it doesn't always necessarily get the context. Because I read the, a couple of the words we've said. Right. And it's like, well, without the delivery, how do you take it serious? But we ask everything, I think. Yeah. Don't we, AJ? I feel like we hit everything. There. I mean, yeah. What, what do people, I guess, what should we have asked? Or what could we have asked him that we did? Well, I think you're supposed to combat everything. I think oh. that's what, like, people, like, think. Like, was like what? if you... That, what, to combat that, like, it, what he was saying today wasn't, like... I don't know. It wasn't one of those days where you could be like, hey, but did you know this? Or where you could have counterpoints. Right? Yeah, but what's what's like it felt different? That's not a real thing, right? Like, I guess you could. Yeah, combat how he feels. Yeah, you could start, I guess. And it's not everybody. A lot of people were like, that was awesome. Enjoyed the hell out of it. We're very thankful for it. But I always wonder why that's like how the people who don't want to listen to what Aaron said, like, that's always what they say. Like, don't want to just like, hey, this is how Aaron feels. Like, this is, we're, this is. Hey, this is exactly how Aaron feels on pretty much everything. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like he's... Th it's well, always going to be, though. Like, you're never... It, 
anybody, nobody wants everything to be positive. That, that means you're saying you're nothing. Like people don't care. Like, no, I agree with sides. that. But I'm talking about like Aaron. Like people will not listen to what Aaron said. Instead, oh no, say, they've already made up their mind. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that. Like it's like it, everything, bro. What do you mean? We've been living that for like you always talk about with this whole. COVID situation, everything. I'm like, I think people are pretty dead set in their beliefs right yeah. now. They're not like whatever way you feel, there's not a whole lot that can flip you. Yeah, we say that about politics because we've had a couple of political conversations on on this program and sure. they always seem to go the same way. I'm better human than you are. That's yeah, impossible because I've been the greatest human on earth since I've been conceived. No, that's not true at all. You're a fugaze. I'm actually a good person. You're a terrible person. You saying that uh, I am fugaze makes you a fugaze because that makes you a liar. No, I'm pointing out the obvious. I'm not lying about anything. I'm saying this is how we all feel because it's the truth. I'm a better person than you are. Yeah, but what's obvious to you is a lie and what's obvious to me is the truth. <laughs> yeah, but what you're talking about being the truth is making us a much worse place. I'm a better human than you are. See, that's impossible because you just saying you're a better human than me makes you a worse human than me. No, that is not accurate at all. You're the fucking worst human that it can ever come across this planet Earth. I hate you. Please don't swear. I hate you. Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm no, you're not. I'm not. I'm are. done with this. No, you're not done with late. this. It's too no, late. No, fuck you. It's too late. You lose. I win now. No, you don't win. You never win. Everything you stand for is a loss. I L, 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 nope. L. No, nope. I woke up in one. I only see Ws. All you see is anger and loss. No, you pooped in your underpants. You couldn't even poop this morning. It's L immediately upon Jump Street today for you, pal. You're a loser. You're a bad human. I'm a better human than you. I pooped in my pants to get the younger voters on my side and guess what? Every single baby in this country is going to vote for me because of it. So that's politics, mm -hmm. yep. right? We just did politics there. We've done a couple of those. And mm -hmm. I always assume in the political world, nobody's willing to listen to the other side because they genuinely believe that they're better humans than the people that are on the other side. Like yeah. Both sides feel that way. And I think both sides need to acknowledge that both sides feel that way. Not saying anybody's telling the truth, but when it comes to changing an opinion, that shit ain't going to happen. Possibly. But in like sports... How can you can't just now, people have hated his guts for a long time. And then the, everything during COVID kind of just amplified everything tenfold. So like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, like, you know, people are set in their ways. He could have, he could have said anything today. And, and today, like it was, it was very tame. You know, he kind of, ah, he buried a couple people. He lose my number, bro. Yeah, yeah. But that's like the insiders well, who he's kind of, well. he's kind of always had that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, like, if, if you hated him going into today's show and you watched it, nothing he said was going to be, you know, make you say like, oh, you know what? He's actually a pretty good guy. Yeah, you're right. I'd never yeah. thought of yeah, it that yeah, way. Yeah, COVID, right. COVID blurred the line between sports and politics. It really did. Well, especially with him. Exactly. Yeah. He was in there. Pack, yeah. he pack, I don't know how much you're paying attention to how dumb our life was in the middle of that whole thing. Every country was blasting me for being the guy that was talking to Aaron Rodgers who had a 500-page report about why he was not going to take the vaccine and why if he got COVID, he apologizes, but he's doing everything that everybody else is doing, and this is just his stance. I was vaccinated having a conversation with Aaron as Aaron was doing that. I got slaughtered yeah. in every different language that Twitter has available mm -hmm. from blue check marks around the world that were like political networks, and everybody just told me what? I wasn't jocked. That's yeah, he's not that he's not jocked. jocked. He's not jocked. Wearing a tank That's all they said. I'm not that jocked. Why is he wearing a tank top? Get him out of here. This unprofessional fuck. So we'd like to let Aaron know. <laughs> we do apologize for bringing potentially that into you, but we appreciate you stopping by. Hell yeah. That was very nice of Aaron to do that, AJ. That was very kind of him. And on your side, very nice of you to Aaron to just be yep. a master deflector. But for us, like, we now know we're talking to a guy that's just that withholding the truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. That right? knows every fucking Yep, thing. knows everything. Just like you, though. What are we? Yeah, you know. What are we talking about? Yeah, this happened yesterday, remember? Mm -hmm. Hey, tell us what you've heard, Pac. Yeah. Remember you with uh, D-Hop? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it's nice to be us. Like, yeah. We're in a good spot. Yeah, no I was angry at Jeff because I already had that information from you. So, AJ, he kind of outed you, but he said he had plausible deniability. What does that mean? He told you some half-truths or what? I don't know, honestly. No. Uh, <laughs> whatever. You're a scumbag. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know plausible deniability, but I don't think uh, I don't know how it applies. You know, this whole situation. We have an incredible guest joining us here in a few moments who certainly deserves a conversation because of what he just did, which was sign a deal with the Atlanta Falcons for thirty-six million dollars over the first two years, sixty-four million dollars yep. in total. Okay, from the Bengals, got franchise tag last year. Maybe he wasn't going to sign the franchise tag. Mm -hmm. Lou Anaruma had to do some recruiting to get him back to sign the franchise tag because everybody understood that he deserved the bag. In the Super Bowl run year, he was a hawk 
for everything. Yeah. Absolutely. The world was introduced to this guy out of Wake Forest, honestly. And then last year, Franchise Tag has another massive year. Everybody assumed the Bengals weren't going to be able to pay him because they're gearing up to pay Joe Burrow and but, Chase but. and everything they have going on. He has signed a deal with the Falcons. We'll be talking to him momentarily. And I, I completely forget. This is, hey, good for Jesse Bates yeah. and also the Falcons spending money down there, AJ. Yeah, good for the Falcons. I mean, so is Desmond Ritter? He's the is he the starting quarterback going into this year? Well, I have Can't no be. idea because in in that division, you know, Heineke's getting like eight million or something like that. I forget what it yeah, is. Two yeah. years, two 20. years, two years, twenty. 20. I think. Yeah, eight, up guarantee. to twenty. Mm -hmm. Right, up yeah, to 20, the max. eight and a half, up to 20 or whatever. So that's NFC South. Maybe he's going to be there. Carolina Panthers, you see what they did. They they signed Andy Dalton to a $10 million deal or whatever, yeah. $8 million fully guaranteed. And if you think about the Carolina Panthers operation now, you got Frank Reich, who's the head coach and play caller. He's a quarterback, former quarterback, long time in the NFL. Josh McCown's a quarterback coach for the Carolina Panthers. He was a quarterback in the NFL for a long time. Andy Dalton, now the backup quarterback, also pseudo quarterback coach, which is what a veteran backup quarterback is for a young guy. He's been in the NFL a long time. It's almost like they're saying, we're going to draft a quarterback, and if this motherfucker can't become an NFL quarterback, with all the years that we have given him game, yeah. Yeah. showing him either how to watch film, showing him how to do things, but also telling him, like, hey, now is the time where you have to go tell that guy, like, need you to do that job. Like, need you to do that. Like, he could... He, showcasing how to be a CEO, how to be an NFL quarterback, I think it's a smart play, AJ, and I think that's exactly why they did it. I think it's a no-brainer to bring Andy in. I think he'll get along well with Frank Reich as well. But, yeah, 100%. Hey, how do we how do we run the walkthroughs? How do we do this? How do we transition to practice from our little walk? Do we do indoors? Like, everything that the quarterback does, you can show him. And Andy can be the guy to kind of show, lead him through the way in the spring, I think. Andy, Josh, Frank. I mean, but, that's a lot of quarterbacks that have a lot yeah. of experience with a lot of different quarterbacks, a lot of different systems. Like, hey, here's how you show up in meetings, okay? Mm -hmm. This is where you're sitting in me. This is how you act. Like, I think they're going to be able to – create an NFL quarterback, old school yeah. NFL quarterback, with like some modern, obviously, touches. You would hope Frank Reich would be able to do that. I think it's a good signing. You were on a team with Andy Dalton. You guys won a lot of games, and earlier you said Andy's in a tier. Obviously, Andy is who he is, but if he's coming in to be the veteran leader role, you think that's a good role for him? I think it's a great role. Um, Andy knows the ins and outs of how to be a pro. He was always the top of the game when it comes to that. And he's smart. So I think it, he'll be a great job of helping some of the young guys. Um, but he can still play football right now. Let's not let's not cross that out. Andy's still a good football player. Um, I, I didn't put him in the top tier, but he's definitely not in the bottom tier. Well, which so matters. I think, I think he's in the middle of the pack when it comes to that. But, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree that. He can help some younger kids out. It's like Hasselbeck with Luck. Hasselbeck yeah. was uh, back up to Luck, and it was like also off the field, on the field. Like, let me handle some – let me do some of the conversations that can kind of take that off your plate as well. Wide receivers were kind of looking for this instead of this mm -hmm. while you can still watch film. Like, there's just so much to having a veteran backup if you're going to go with a young quarterback, which all eyes are on the Carolina Panthers at number one overall pick. Yeah, and remember what he did with Fields. Like, Fields talked about how Andy would or spend time with him or Fields would go spend time with Andy and his wife and they go out to dinner and so he's already kind of you know shown just in the way so he's used to that role and by all accounts it feels as though fields it's kind of paid off for him because he had a pretty damn good year last year how about andy dalton huh the red rocket hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, red Rock. teaching the future Red Rocket finds another home. It's good. Hey, how about this? You were getting all Ooh. pissed off when people were talking about Anthony Richardson because you're an Ohio State guy. <laughs> yep. Not even close. C.J. Stroud allegedly going to be the guy who goes number one overall. But then there was reports that Frank Reich loves Anthony Richardson and Tepper loves Bryce Young. So there's still – I feel like there's a lot of intrigue still in this draft. Is that how you're viewing it, Tone? Numbers moving a little bit. C.J. was 300 a couple days ago. He's Ooh. down to 220 now. And But and they only know what we know, too. True. Yep. And Anthony Richardson was 500. He's 350 now. So, I mean, it's – I mean, what – When's Alabama's We program? don't know. We honestly have no I mean, Trey Lance happened what two years ago, the day of. He was plus like yeah. he was plus like twelve hundred the morning of. We and, changed that. Yeah, yeah. Mac yeah. Jones. Well, and then he actually overall. did go. Yeah, the whole mm. the whole thought though, the sports books know the same amount as us. Yes. AJ. The draft they can be got. Do they? Yes. This is what we have experienced. Now, are they pissed off from the last couple of years getting got? Yeah. Potentially. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're trying to work the angles a little bit more to find out information before the rest of the world. But, like, I know those numbers mean something, but we're in lion season. Everybody's yes. lying about everything. You could see how they would put Frank Reich, Josh McCown, 
and Andy Dalton around like Anthony Richardson mm -hmm. and be like, hey, here we go. This is exactly what it is. This is how the game goes. Everybody's worried about his reps, his experience. He's got to wait a year. It's like, here's fucking 50 years of NFL experience basically in the room with you at all times. Then you think about C.J. Stroud, who's like the most polished, it seems like, and with the size and everything in the modern game, being able to run, it's like maybe they're like, we think we can make this guy the best version he could be. And then Bryce Young, people are saying, is the most talented guy. Every owner that we've heard speak about this draft class, Jim Irsay and Tepper, allegedly, Jim Irsay definitely says, that guy in Alabama – He's the best player that we've seen in a long time. Yeah. So we there's real question marks, I think, with this draft class. Like, real, yeah. legit dr question marks everywhere around it. Well, and with Andy Dalton, it feels like he can kind of show either guy, you know, this is how you attack, you know, certain defenses through the air. You wonder if, especially in Carolina, if they'll bring in, like, a Cam Newton to kind of show him, like, hey, as a quarterback who's a little more mobile, similar to Anthony Richardson, but also C.J. Stroud, because we saw him, you know, dance around against Ohio State. So it feels like they do have a lot of the resources. And like you said, if they can't figure it out with Dalton and McCown and Frank Reich, then it's probably more so about the player than the actual, you know, teaching around. Yeah, you would hope. But, yeah. I mean, Frank Reich, there was moments where he was here in Indy where he was a fucking incredible coach. Yeah, absolutely. Like, great coach. There was moments where you're like, Frank Reich's a guy. Frank Reich is the guy. What happened? Honestly, what happened? I, I, that's the that's the massive. I would assume. Did you lose the team? Do you lose the team or something? What happened? I don't get it. I don't know. What do you think that means when you lose a team? You think that can happen? Back? You think? Uh, I, I, I've never been on the team with her. Coach lost it too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how, how it happened. I'm, I'm talking if they like don't if they lose respect for him and some of the big time guys all you see what they're doing and it trickles down through the rest of the team. I don't know if that happened, but I'm saying that's how it can. Did you think that can happen? You think that can happen? Yeah, I think a team can come together hating a coach and not 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 hating it. You can respect a coach but still hate him and you can kind of band together. But if you don't respect him and you hate him, that's how you lose the team. Yeah, I don't know, man. That just feels uncomfortable in the building at all times. And maybe it because was. That, I mean, how you much you 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 got to you got to perform to get paid. So, yeah. You really not performing, that hurts yourself. Yeah, I don't it, I don't fully understand, but it seemed like that was the case. Like yeah. to your point, what you're asking, the right question how because that was certainly like is that what took place? And that's why he got fired. And Jim Irsay was like, ah, we can, for the good of both sides, we got to go to our own ways. But Frank won a lot of games with numerous quarterbacks. Now, did not make the playoffs with Carson Wentz, lose to Jacksonville last game of the season while their fans were dressed like clowns. Mm -hmm. Fans were in the stands, it's tough, Fondant. dressing like clowns because of how poorly they thought the Jacksonville Jaguars were being run. Their fans protesting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Colts lose there and don't make the playoffs. So, Yikes. like, that was certainly that was certainly something that the Indianapolis Colts fans went through. But it's like Frank Reich, I think, was always viewed as like, he's putting some pieces together over there that I think are very smart, I think, in Carolina. But how much of that, like you said, was Carson Wentz? Like, he stuck his neck out big time to go get mm -hmm. him, and then now we've seen Carson Wentz, you know, go from there to Washington. Washington pays him all that money, releases him. Like, how much of the team – I mean, and say what you want about Matt Ryan, but – like you can, you could understand if guys are just like, you know, I mean, this guy's fucking. Oh, he's not even cold yet. Putting, putting all of his. <laughs> Matt Ryan got cut. We get it. Yeah. Thank well, you for bringing it up. Right, but I mean, and, and who knows how much he of didn't that make was the playoffs Frank yeah, Reich? We got a fourth overall pick. Who knows how much of that's Frank Reich? Who knows how much of that's the front office? But it's like, hey, this guy's supposed to be a quarterback whisperer, quarterback guru. We get these two guys who he assured everyone kind of that, like, hey, we get a guy like this, we're going to be fine. We have so much talent around here. And then they suck both years. We have not heard from Frank directly about the Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, mm -hmm. Matt Ryan signing, like if it was him. But we certainly just assumed, like, well, he's Car Carson for sure. I think was a, he was a big part of that. Well, and Phil Rivers was because the Chargers, right? Yeah, they had a history together. It just so happened System. to be the perfect situation. Remember, it was kind of popping up. Colts have been through it. I, they're sitting at four, which I, you know what, Stetson Bennett did his pro day today with half a tin, yeah, big honker uh -huh. in his in his mouth. He obviously got an alcohol charge a couple weeks ago. The guy likes to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. raises hail. He raises hail. Mm -hmm. He wins. Looks big. Looks He's jocked. He is jocked. He's jocked, you know. At the combine, they had that shot from behind, guys. His shoulders looked, yeah. you know, like a nice chest. chest. Yeah. This guy, he, look, he can move. Go ahead and take Stetson at take four. Take him at four. Go ahead yeah. take, take Stetson at four. Dude, well, good, news, good news is 
Stephon Gilmore is not there anymore, and he wasn't helping anybody. Yeah, Stephon Gilmore got traded for a bag of balls down to the Dallas yeah. Cowboys from yep. the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, but Ashton freaking Doolin's back, baby. Okay, Let's go. I am happy about it. Do- Shout out. Let's go. And and Who was that? Uh, I think that was Jason Witten. Yes, was one hundred. That was tough. That was rabbit out of the head. Jason Witten. We always keep. Uh, putting our toe in our mouth. <laughs> you know what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Like Shooting ourselves in our toe. Yeah, yeah. there it was. Uh, put your toe in your mouth a little different. <laughs> Same thing, though. <laughs> yeah, but I knew foot and mouth. I knew it was yeah, a foot yeah, toe. Foot too. I love Jason Witten as a player and as a human. Oh, yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. He's oh. like top five human, I guess. Oh! oh! Veteran linebacker Levante David is returning to the Ooh. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on a one-year, $7 million guaranteed deal. Ooh. Sources tell... Tom Pelissero and Rap Sheet back for a 12th season in Tampa at the age of 33. Congrats to Levante getting a deal done. Boy, Seven line million line. guaranteed for another year of football down there. I wonder what the market was saying. There was numerous linebackers that were signed elsewhere during the tampering period. Now Levante David returning to the Bucks, who also signed a quarterback to a one-year deal for eight and a half million dollars. Baker Mayfield now Baker. is starting quarterback Ooh. for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Baby, Baker. and he's only 27 years old. So here we are on the third day of the tampering period. League year kicking off here in a couple hours, and the Tampa. Bay Buccaneers make two massive signings at quarterback and veteran linebacker. How do you feel about both of these things, AJ Hulk? Well, Levante makes a lot of sense. I'm glad he got, I mean, one year, seven million, your 12th season, that's awesome, especially playing inside backer. He's like the, uh, he's kind of been the heartbeat of that defense, that team for a long time. I feel like he, people love the dude. So it's yeah. great. But is yes. Baker guaranteed? He, they're not like, do they say you were signing you to be the starter? Or are they saying you're competing with, is it trash? Kyle, Kyle Trask. Yeah, everybody yeah. is, uh, I don't know, because it felt like from the reports, and this is just a feel thing, that there were some people saying somebody's going to get brought in and compete with Kyle Trask, and then when the Baker Mayfield thing was announced, it was like, Baker Mayfield's a starter, but he's not getting paid like astronomical numbers for a 27-year-old. Pac, what are your thoughts on the – what's that, pal? It's a prove-it year for Baker. Hey, let's see. You can get your your career back on track if you come here and you light it up. Yeah, and there's the future's wide open down there in Tampa. That's, you know, that's yeah. a vision too. They have a great offense. Yeah, the NFC South it hasn't had it all figured wide out open. just yet. I mean, good time for Baker Mayfield and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How do you feel about the moves, Pack? Same division. I, well, I I just I don't know. Baker Carolina did it work out? Did he have weapons? Huh? Robbie Anderson out of there, then he goes chosen, down to chosen, Tampa. chosen, 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 oh, chosen, 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 Bob. Bob. Uh, Let's not be disrespectful, please, on this program, please. Never. Sorry. I don't know if he got enough weapons to say that. Oh, what are you saying? Not the best setup down there? Is Mike Evans still there? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Who else? Godwin. 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 You got Godwin. Russell Gage. Mm-hmm. Hold on. What's uh track? Uh, Scoot. Scoot. Darty? Darty. Scoot. Scoot. Oh, yeah. Scoot. Scott Scott Miller. Yeah. Scotty Miller. He's All still there. All of that's good with no running game. If if Brady that's couldn't true. do nothing with it, how in the hell is your boy going? I mean, is you didn't even remember his uh, name. Look at this. <laughs> you didn't even remember his name. Tom wasn't in practice. <laughs> What'd you say? Baker Mayfield. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. There it is. All right. If, if Brady could <laughs> if Brady couldn't do nothing with it, how Baker Mayfield gonna do something with it? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, Baker went over to Los Angeles Rams, you know, last year. Yeah. He balled out. There's a lot of things that weren't working, and then you drop a Baker Mayfield on a Thursday night yeah. out there. Woo. Let the world on fire. <laughs> guess they're, guess they're Shots, explosives. explosives. <laughs> I'm taking TB any day. Tom Brady? Yes. Yeah, I think Over a lot Baker of people Mayfield. would. I think Baker Mayfield at this point would as well. I mean, what a hilarious <laughs> argument to start. Would you rather have Tom Brady or Baker Mayfield? I mean, that is uh, How old that is hilarious. Old. We'll see what oh. Hey, Baker, 27. Come Let's go, bake. buddy. Come on, Baker. No old line. I mean, it's just Bob Hainsey and Tristan Wirtz right now. Um, Rich Stroud, who has covered the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for like 35 years, has tweeted maybe Zeke to the Bucs. Oh. Uh, because oh. there you go. Uh, obviously uh, running like back – Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette yeah. on the move. Mm-hmm. He was playoff Lenny, Lombo Lenny. Then it was kind of like, we don't run the ball much anymore. We throw the ball 40 times. Maybe Zeke going to Tampa with a small quarterback contract for Baker Mayfield. Kind of kind of disrespectful of Connor to say, too, that they have no O-line when Zeke can play running back and center. That's true. What's uh, your problem? Come on. This, I, what's his deal? I was just sticking up. Yeah, forgot about Jensen. Diggs. Come on. Forgot about Jensen, too. Jensen's an absolute dog. And Hainsey. Tristan Wirfs. Yeah, Hainsey and We Wirfs. saw him squatting. I mean, that O-line's ready yeah. to go. It, but let's also remember Rashad White. I mean, he's unbelievable, too. Yeah, he good. came on for the Bucs at the end of the year. Maybe the Bucs are a team next year in the NFC South, Pack. 
I don't see it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could. Someone's gonna win that division. I was gonna say you could maybe win football, six right games now. and win that's that division the worst division. Next year. Worst yeah. division in football. Nobody even watched the division right now. Yeah, you can argue Baker Mayfield is also the best quarterback in that division. Oh, you know, we didn't ask. Speaking of oh, divisions and how good they are and everything like that. What's that? Well, Andy Dalton. I mean, let's. That's why I'm saying right you now. could Derek, argue. Derek, Derek Carr. Carr. You could argue. I fucking forgot Come about on. Derek Carr down there in the Saints. What a hilarious division that is. Yeah. What we didn't yeah. ask about that is a that is a it is. that is kind of a throwback division mm-hmm. down there in the <laughs> NFC South. Yeah. The um the divisions that Aaron with the Jets would have to play is who the AFC West and the NFC East. Bingo. Yeah. Those are so that's let's go through it. Super Bowl champion, right? Mm-hmm. Chiefs, Raiders. Broncos, Chargers. Mm-hmm. Then you just bounce the NFC East. Who's that? Oh, I don't know. The NFC champions, Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Cowboys, who Mike McCarthy's taking over play calling duties. That's right. Dan Quinn's still there as defense They're coordinator. Yeah. They're doing their thing. The Giants just paid Danny Dimes. They still got Saquon Barkley. And they just signed Traded for Waller. Waller. Darren mm-hmm. Waller from yeah. the Raiders. Oh, and he was traded from the Raiders yeah. because he fucking hated Josh McDaniels. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly, oh. of course. Per, per Twitter. Daniels out at his wedding. Not only did I assume that was just kind of like the cherry on top because he wasn't even invited he to the was wedding. Not. Oh, he wasn't. No. Okay. no. Kelsey, he... uh, Kelsey Plum, Plum. Waller. Uh, well, I don't know. I Kelsey think... Plum, who's an absolute dog, dog on the basketball court, yeah. reigning WNBA champion out there with the Aces, and like Whoa. super swagged out. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Baller. Hey, we're talking yeah. about absolute dog. Here. Dog. Yes. She's okay, the one kids here. Kelsey. Arm. What's that? Yeah. She's the one with a rocket arm. She does have a rocket arm, yes. Just know that Darren Waller and her coming together is great for society. It is. And we are happy they found love. Yeah. Hell yeah. With that being said, whenever they decided to make their love official and everything like that, they said that coach, get him the fuck off of the list. Mm-hmm. And then he goes and says, Hey, you're getting married this weekend, and what you call it? And then they go, "We hate this guy." Do you think that is yeah. kind of how this all unfolded for him to get traded one year into a brand new deal, and in a season in which the Raiders are trying to be good at football, not trying to be bad at football? Oh. This guy's a stud. This is a wild thing that the Giants got. This still makes no sense. They signed him to a new deal last year. Uh, he's hurt a little bit when he does play. They just don't throw him the ball. And then at the end of the year, yeah, I mean, it's just like, all right, fuck it. Let's get rid of this guy. Who gives a shit that we just gave him a new deal and he's one of the five best tight ends in the NFL. He didn't invite me to his wedding. Fuck him. Get him out of town. So now he's in the NFC East, Aaron Waller, mm-hmm. because of the situation there, personal. And then you got the Washington Commanders. Exactly. Who Sam Howe. May stink forever. No! Oh, Heineke said Sam Howe was bowling. Yeah, yeah, he deserves an opportunity in this guy. He's got a great deal on Heineke is the magic man, and he is now gone. Yeah, he was kind of yeah. the... Although Biennemi did have an unbelievable entry press conference. Oh, so yeah. Maybe. Hold on. Hey, Shady don't like Biennemi. We don't know Shady as well as you do. But that was a little thing there for a bit. I completely yeah. forgot about that. And then yeah. the enemy did that press conference to <laughs> answer Shady. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the first time a lot of us had heard him like talk about anything. Yeah, and Eric then, the enemy don't give a fuck. No, <laughs> about what's going on outside of this building. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then he, I can't wait to get in that playbook. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> my, my man. man. My boy. What's going on? Uh, Boom. That was the first time we ever <laughs> seen really the enemy in that extended amount of period. Shady don't like him, though. You think he's got what? You think that offense is something that can make the Washington Commanders relevant in a very difficult division next year? Well, I can't speak for Shady and, and him and Eric, the enemy relationship, because I really think Shady relationship is because he played up under him. And they kind of had a little yeah. It's a different world. At the oh, end of that's a personal relationship, right? At yes. the end of shady career, you know how shady is. Shady do crazy work. You know he's never played up under nobody, so that was kind of a different situation. And shady's awesome. Yeah, shady, shady will yeah. talk shit. And yes. shady will talk shit. Yeah, yeah. So we, we all know that. Yeah, we're big fans. Shady. But I do think Eric the Enemy is a good motivator. I don't know how much he know about putting the guys in the formation or calling plays, as Shady would say. He'll figure it but out, hopefully. I do think he, he is good at good with motivating and getting a group of guys ready to go. Which is a massive part of it. Everybody on the same page. We're all wrong, we're all yeah. right, hopefully. He gets his opportunity to potentially showcase that he could be a head coach as opposed to being up under Andy Reid, although others have yeah. been under Andy Reid and gotten head coaching jobs. In the past. So it's an interesting dynamic, and the Commanders are certainly in there. The Jets, obviously, would be one of the teams of the AFC East that would have to take on the two most difficult at this particular point divisions in the NFL next year. That's your season getting filled up. Oh, yeah. We have an update from a Jets diehard fan. Old Greeny's wife <laughs> has tweeted how it started. 
versus how it's going. From the beginning of the convo, dead. Oh, I can't yeah. take it anymore. To the end, Greeny's popping bottles. Hell AJ, yeah. Greeny's popping bottles. The Jets are back. Are you going to FaceTime them? Be a part of the celebration. Yeah. I was thinking about Greeny uh, in the middle of that when Aaron was talking about it and saying, you know, everything looks like New York. I was like, man, I really wonder what Greeny is doing right now. And I guess now I know. <laughs> This is it. Well, Greeny is a happy camper right now. So, but Greeny might be out in an apartment, a house. Yeah, he might be yeah. standing with garden shears right now, ready to clip off his Johnson, yeah. too. <laughs> like, you think that's his method? I don't think Probably. he... He didn't say he was definitely going to cut off his dick, right? Dull, no, but dull no. garden shears. He said it was negotiable. He said he Yeah, might. negotiable. It is negotiable. He's going to use a welding torch. Yeah, because of that, this is probably <laughs> fresh So it cauterizes the, the w immediately. Smart. Yeah, but with him, you better bring extra propane because... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You know, we're talking... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Coiling on the ground. So you're better. right. <laughs> With that outfit and that one, that is probably... Is that a, is that a TIG or, or, or a FIG weld? What are we... Are we moving be here a couple hours cutting through this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, Greeny, and all Jets fans That's everywhere. Great. Yeah. How about he just openly said, my intentions is I want to play for the New York Jets. I was yeah. like, whoa, yeah, there it was. Yeah, yeah, first person yeah. ever to boom, say that. Boom, there it was. Boom, boom, boom. Just casually. You know, boom, boom, boom. Well, man, man, man. Man. But uh, to days, quote bro. Coach Gannon of the Arizona Cardinals via their social media director that Gannon. probably shouldn't have put that out there. The but that was like oh. three minutes into an answer. That was like three minutes into an yeah. answer. And he was like, I've, I've been very consistent since Friday that my intentions are I want to play for the New York Jets. And we were like, Shit. Okay. All right. Again. All right. That's just okay. That's as uh, blatant as you can make. You just said it straight up, and then you could hear Greeny. Boom. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Just going bananas over there. Yeah. And then ding, 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 ding. All the Jets fans wait, like wait, parade wait. time. Yeah. Let's fucking do this thing. I'm yeah. Good for Aaron going to a whole new home. I mean, that's a whole new home over there. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know. Guy's popping bottles because he's coming. Exactly. Yeah, bo Think about bopping. that. It, he's bopping bottles. Yeah. Like, we, got, <laughs> we got one Connor over here with the ass face the whole time. Like, yeah, not, not thrilled that no, he's coming into the division. Yeah, this is the first time. and Because even when Cam Newton was there, you assumed going into the season, like, Cam Newton was pissed. You know, he had all those hype videos. This guy's going to, you know, make some noise. This is the first time now we're going into a season. It's like. Okay, we are staring down last place in this division. Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Tua Tonga Valo. Oh, oh. Would we like to let's let's get some phone calls on the five hundred no, phone line? Fine. We can just do this right now. No, I mean, yeah, if, if the Dolphins win the Super Bowl, I'll take it back. But if they go ten and six and get their ass beat in the first round, you want me to bow down and smooch to his bunghole? I'm not going to do it. No. Okay, <laughs> you're not smooching his bunghole. Yeah, no. I'm not smooching his bunghole. I'm not tonguing his bunghole or his nutsack. Yeah. Okay, it's not going to happen. Okay, so, can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. Won't do it. Now my but fight. win a but Super maybe. Bowl. Win a Super Bowl. I'll consider smooching to his bunghole. Mike White's better <laughs> than two. What about AFC Championship? He better consent. They're not going to make the AFC championship. Well, it would all obviously be above board. Jesus. Yeah, come on. Come on. Think I'm, just yeah. I'm trying to save the right there. Don't I think don't. I'm just sneaking into the locker room and tonguing his butthole without him knowing. <laughs> for those that don't know, okay. I'm trying to make it clear for people. This is all Ty saying that he will not kiss the ass metaphorically. Thank you. Yes. Tongue, tongue punch his butthole. So he's added I didn't on to say that. He's added on to it today. Yeah. Uh -huh. And AJ just, you know, trying to clarify it a little bit more. Thank you for doing that, AJ, for the good of the listener. Yeah. But Shut metaphorically, up, what Ty, for people that don't know the show, it's the first time. Right. Ty is saying <laughs> that the Miami Dolphins digital fan base on Twitter. Dolphin. The Dolphin, the Fins Up community, the Fin Fam. Mm -hmm. I don't know what all they, they have. They are an active bunch. And he said some disparaging remarks about Tua not being able to survive an entire season. And Which isn't that disparaging at all because he hasn't done it yet in his career. His back spasm. Again, oh. that's fine. Okay, so they put him on top of Cuck Mountain, which is the worst place you could be in the Finn Fam community. Yeah. They it, are active. That's perfect. Yes, they are active. It is an all-out assault yeah. all day, all night yep. when you're on the top of Cuck Mountain. Did Gumby make it? Because the work it only starts have. when you get to the top of the mountain, and Ty has gotten to the top of Cuck Mountain, and they are certainly putting in their work they on are. old Ty Schmidt right now. And uh, all you're saying is, I will take back my comment. Absolutely. But to expect me to untie the balloon knot... Yeah. Right now. Don't be expecting With my it. tongue. Can't happen. I'm not doing it, okay? And last time I checked, you don't fucking win Super Bowls in March, okay? Well, you can't lose them. Aaron Rodgers wants to go to the Jets. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help. It's, it's, a, a, big, deal. it's a big deal. We, we assume the deal's going to get done. The yeah. Packers and Jets? Yes. Yeah. Has to after what happened today, I yeah. think. Of course. Packers in. I saw Andrew, Andrew Brandt, former Packers executive, tweet that now 
Aaron doing that because all the Jets fan base is so like, hey, we need to get this fucking done, need to get this fucking done, may have actually helped the Packers out. Is, is that They have no leverage, dude. Yeah. That I was- tried to explain that on the thing, and obviously other people know business better than I do. Some businesses, I think. No, everybody, yes. There, every business, somebody knows the business much better than I do, okay? Not everybody that speaks about all of them all the time. I feel like I'm a pretty <laughs> solid uh, business human. I feel like I do okay. Now, I am not scared to ask questions. I'm not scared to be like, what does that mean? Well, why would I do that? I don't know why I would do that. I think it's a very interesting negotiation for the people on the other side whenever I'm in there because it's all like cards in my eyes. You know, everything's like cards. I enjoy cards. When you got it and you're in a good spot, you're good. When somebody's trying to play you a little bit, you got to be able to sense it and you got to be able to sit in the pocket. You know, you got to be able to kind of ride the waves a little bit in this whole thing. It's like you try to look at this from the Green Bay Packers standpoint with the world knowing they want to move on to Jordan Love, especially now it being concrete pretty much, that they want to move on to Jordan Love with the contract that they would want to move on from still on their side of the fence of the negotiation, which is usually a massive piece of the negotiation. Like they want to unload it. They want to move on. Everybody knows that. This is vastly different than the Matthew Stafford situation where they took on a huge contract. Mm -hmm. There was numerous teams allegedly involved in it. Matthew, you didn't have the backup already. You didn't draft the person personally. Like, it's just a whole different – like, if Aaron really wants to, like, he can make them just be in hell for the next couple years. Not that he's done that. He said he's been hands-off. But I don't know how they have any leverage. I honestly don't see it at all, and I think the Jets are probably saying the same damn thing. Well, it seems like whatever leverage they may have had, like Mark Murphy lit that on fire when he talked about, you know, like basically just said, like, hey, there's no way Aaron's coming back next year. If it's if, if we get what we want, he won't be playing here next year. Do you think any part of it is the Packers may be willing to eat some of his contract? Because now it's being reported that they want two first-round picks that – one one deal is like, hey, we'll trade him. We'll get a first round pick. That's it. That's you done. get the contract exactly. Or we'll eat some of this contract, half of it, or what, whatever the number may be, and we want an additional first round pick. Yeah, I assume that's all up for negotiation. If they sure. can't make a deal, does Aaron just not play? I, he has to go though. Oh, the deal to- is going to get made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. it's not, not. It's not a such a thing as the deal that it don't get made. No, it, it get made. Um, you don't get the ass on the first night, so you got to massage it a little bit, bro. <laughs> yeah. Pellis arrow. Hell yeah. uh, the Four arrow o'clock, Pellis arrow. You know, <laughs> Four o'clock is, is the due date today. Um, I think it get done this week, though. Yeah, I think it will as yeah. well. What are you saying, Nick? Pellis arrow said they're no longer – it. They're not asking for two first round picks. They may have at one point. They should. Uh, yeah, I don't think – after today, I'm not 100% sure that that's even going to be feasible. No. All right. Because – Unless I'm wrong, where is their leverage? Just that they have him and another team doesn't, but everybody that they would do business with knows that they don't want him. So right. it's like that's a tough now you're kind of There's no leverage. Yeah, you have none. Like you're you're kind of the ones holding it all. Have to get something in return though, because your fans will kill you. For sure. Like I told Ty a couple of days ago, just as this continued to go on, if he was to go, like I think there's a chance that Packers fans are not gonna be pumped about what they get in return. They're gonna think, oh, Aaron Rodgers, we only got whatever it is. It's like, I think that's what it's going to be because the contract as well that's going yeah. the other way. I guess the only flip side in terms of le- re- leverage would be that the Jets have kind of backed themselves into the corner that, like, they, they have no backup plan. Like, you're you're starting – you're going with Zach Wilson if you don't get Rodgers. And after everything that happened, you don't have Mike White anymore. Like, you're, you're stuck with Zach Wilson. So, I guess the Packers can play that game. Yeah. I guess Which they could. They probably won't. But it but. seems like all parties are going to move on. There is breaking news that Juju Smith-Schuster <laughs> has got a bag oh. from the New England Patriots. Oh. Taylor Bashotti with the news break. I believe she works in Los Angeles. Yes. I believe so. For the Chargers. So that's where Juju stays in. Uh, he's in a TikTok uh, house. Yeah, he's, a, yeah. he's in, a, in a collective. Pod. Taylor Bashotti with the news break alongside <laughs> Rap Sheet. Juju Smith Schuster going to the New England Patriots. First reaction, Connor. I'm going to be TikToking my ass all the way to the Super Bowl or all the way to a 6 and 12 season. 
Six yep. and twelve. You play eighteen game? game? Well, yeah, we're gonna include <laughs> the uh, signing as a loss if we don't end up making the playoffs. No, no, I saw you jujuing on the beat over there. That's what I said. We're TikToking all day. Now I might download TikTok to my phone. I, actually, not. I won't do that because we all know who runs TikTok. But, but I will. Juju does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Juju yeah. Smith Schuster. He does. Him and Jackson Mahomes, which unfortunately didn't mean to bring that up either. But Jeez. Juju. Hey, what that video? What's going on? Pretty very, damning. Very damning. Yeah. It's going to be tough for him. Yeah. yeah it's going to be. Can't Why act, can't be doing it? Can't either? act like that. What are we doing? What are we doing? Can't be doing that. Can't be doing it because other people think it's okay because they think exactly. Jackson's cool. Exactly. It's a precedent thing. It's a, it's a statement. You you have a platform. You know, there's shit that you can't do. We talked to, whenever we talked to Dana. That's like, right. You're fucking Dana White, bro. That can't. People like are inspired by you. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Jackson. Mm-hmm. You're very young, but people like look to you as a. Role model. Yeah. Can't have it. You know, like it just comes with a little bit of responsibility. And I'm somebody that got arrested. I had a public intoxication. So, like, I'm not saying that, like, it's easy to do everything right all the time and not fuck up. But, like, that type of shit can't happen if you have a platform because A, it's terrible. B, other people might think, oh, it's acceptable. And C, you're fucking your brother over. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Big time. Every picture was like, Here's Patrick. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes' brother was the reporting a lot of the time. Yeah, it's like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, bad. Anyways, Juju uh, talked a lot of shit to A.J. Brown and to the entire internet pretty much. Yep. They but still he... the last team in the division. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Are you sure? I can't wait to see oh! just want to it more ceremoniously that. gift you my B-suit. You're going to love it. Thank you. You're going to love it. I, no, that's the thing, because I will die. Pew, pew, pew. I'm going to be dying on the, on the hill of Juju now. Are you getting a jersey? Let's go. Absolutely not. What? No, I'm not just I'm not just getting on the jersey. Get- if you if I'm buying your jersey, John, John you better, Smith jersey, you better freaking do something. I wonder if Bill is going to make him change his name to his real John Smith name. You think Bill Belichick's going, we're, 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 we're about Josh. The Juju. Josh Smith, sorry. Josh. I mean, new number. He didn't do it to Ocho. Yeah, but. Bill always has the ability. Ah, didn't we say that he normally? I guess Juju is. He blocks, right? He gets yeah. in there. He's, he's had some good, good games goal. against I the Patriots. That, yeah. He's had good games against the Pats. I mean, he did just have a pretty good Super Bowl. He, it, the lead up to it, you know, the road to the Super Bowl, maybe not, but he played pretty well in the Super Bowl. And he didn't TikTok all season, right? He didn't TikTok. So all Bill was going to expect that same thing. You no, know, and at the end of the day, too, our offense does now run through Ramondre Stevenson, and he can block. Juju is yeah, he, can he that. is pretty good in the run blocking game. They're going to win games. You don't think they're going to win games? No, <laughs> I don't think they paid Juju to come block. Well, we got the numbers right now. Three years, $33 million <laughs> got paid. is the did. deal. Three years, $33 million for Juju Smith-Schuster to the Patriots per source, says Schultz. Uh, okay, okay. So well, hell yeah. that's okay. the exact same number, though, As that Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers got, and basically the exact same no- number that Lazard, uh, Lazard yeah. got. Too. So yeah. that's the market. So Schultz could million be. $11 million a year is what they all pretty much got. Oh, no. We'll we'll see Schultz see knows. What, He's down see what the deal is. We'll see he what the deal Schultz. is. Hey, Schultz, it's okay. Schultz. Hey, Schultz, we love you, Schultz. Hey, Schultz. Hey, Schultz. He's like 26 years old. Yeah, he's young, man. Very young. He's very young. Maybe he's done with TikTok then. Now that we're talking about it, he might say, you know what, I'm 26. I, I, I'm done with this shit. I'm gonna just. What if he gets up to New England and all of a sudden it's just like him all by himself <laughs> in it? And then, then like music beat drop and then Bill Belichick comes in. The oh, <laughs> if that his, happens. With his torn sweatshirt and he's like, whoa, what's up? Oh, you know what I mean? Hello, do that shit again. Adam Schefter. Yeah, I just do the whole thing and then Bill pops in, hey, what's going on? Like what's Weekend at Bernie's? On? Like Brian Kelly at LSU? Bingo, when he was doing yep. the full yeah. guns. Yeah. That quarterback is transferred. Compensation update from Adam Schefter confirming either confirming or breaking Dang. at the exact same time as Schultz. Three year, thirty-three million, twenty-two and a half million earned over the first two years of the deal. So this is a two-year, twenty-two and a half million dollar deal for Juju Smith-Schuster to the New England Patriots. Congrats to Juju. Go, Juju. He might have he might have grown up because you know twenty-six. He's got to get off of uh, his parents' uh, insurance. So like that's a big step. The NFL's insurance. That's a good point. Right. This and this is exactly it does not why. last forever though. It's for five years after you retire, then it's done, and then you might be have a pregnant wife at that exact time. Damn it. Yeah, that's great. Well, I don't think you have lifetime insurance. <laughs> Why don't we? What do I we, don't understand that. We, we have 45 insurance companies that, you know, advertise with the NFL. Yep. Can we not, you know? Hey, not pay more for the lifers. I mean, they expect NFL guys to die young anyway. They might as well do it. Oh! Oh! 
For real. Pew, pew, pew. Whoa. Shots, 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 Anyways, we are pumped for Juju. We're yeah, pumped we for are. Aaron. Yeah. It's good um, money for Juju. And That's we do great know, money for Juju. Hell yeah, he yeah. should be pumped. He played yeah. one year with the Chiefs, won a Super Bowl, and now he's got $22.5 million coming over the next Pretty two good. years. Nice. And this has been uh, kind of in the works for a long time. Juju and Bill have been talking after games, hugging after games, chit-chatting after games for a long, long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where he actually well, said, cut Joshua. that fucking shit with TikTok. Juju said, all right, I'll try. No, I probably told him to ta hey, tag me in some of your Why videos. Faces I'm trying to get weird. my followers. <laughs> I don't think Bill does that to a lot of people, though. Like, he talking. doesn't. He got some. He got some BU. It feels like he hasn't it? hugged his kids in over no, two decades. I'm yeah. saying, yeah, right. He kisses them on a mouth. Yeah, they yeah. only make out. Yeah. This, um, <laughs> they do. Right? You know what that happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah, Bill and his daughter post Super Bowl just tonguing. But to Nick's point, <laughs> allegedly uh, or actually, in the photo, I don't know. It was. It looked like it was on accident, but in the photo, that's what they're doing. Uh, he probably did. <laughs> Hey, that look photo. I, I, sorry, you're I'm the biggest Bill guy of all time. I, I will die on Belichick's hill. I said that about Juju, kind of jokingly. I will never say anything bad about Bill. Uh, to Nick's well, point, he's probably doing this because of the fact that he would tear us up. So uh, he probably Juju went over. Kill you guys? Yeah, kill us. That means maybe Lamar, huh? Because Lamar would do damage to you guys too, didn't he? Uh, maybe Lamar. It sure sounds like uh, Lamar is just going to get his offer matched. Somebody just sent the photo. We do not need to put that up on air, but you were accurate in what you were saying about yeah. the picture yeah. after the Super yeah. Bowl. Send it this, to me. Uh, hey. Yeah, it's in a group. It's You've seen it. Yeah, yeah, chat room, as you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Girl. As we get out of here, I think it's time for Pac-Man to win some money for people. Oh, here yeah. you go, Pac. Yesterday, it did not take place, right? It no, it didn't. Right, Pac? No, it didn't. <laughs> no. I was... uh, I'm pickleball or the golf. Oh, no. We oh, did sweet. stream pickleball on oh, Twitter sweet. yesterday. Uh, if you missed it at about 4.40, uh -huh. I think, 5? 4.30. Four, four, four yeah, 4.15, 4 four 4.30. I mean, that's something we should start doing more often. Definitely. That was awesome. Yeah. Very fun. You guys had a great game. Well. Connor won. Connor won. Connor won, but it's your third time playing. Third time. Here, that microphone right there if you want to go. Or what are you going to do? Are you going to throw from up here? What, what do you throw from? What do you want to do? You throw it from the stage. Yeah, you throw it from the stage right yeah. here. That's a throw spot. Right? You if you didn't, balls. then we would have hey, to Hey, look how it. cool he looks. Look at these pants, bro. Yeah, well, it's coming out the back. It's a little tag like it's a... I thought it was a baby belt. That thing is sweet. Yeah, he looks super cool. Dude, it was in a box here. Earlier, we walked in, there was yeah. a box I seen, and it had, like, super cool clothes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit. Did somebody send this? <laughs> And Pac's like, that's what I'm wearing today. I'm like, super cool. He's like, how'd you see it? I'm like, the fucking tag was hanging out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tag of the pants Solid. was hanging out. It looks super cool. Yeah. Shoes, great, obviously. Yeah. And now, Pac-Man Jones. AJ, how many people should win if he's able to either throw the football into any of those? Oh, oh Bill, Bill. Yeah, I got to grab them balls. Grab out, Bill. Bill, Make Bill, it way run, too easy. Bill. Make Bill. No, you don't have to run, Bill. You don't have to run, Bill. <laughs> Hurry up, up, Bill. <laughs> Bill, he's been working out two times a day. He is in a... Growth season. That a baby Bill. A baby Bill. Bill. Growth spurt. <laughs> Growth season. He is. He's, this is bulking season. He's going to yeah, cut right is. before bulking season. season. <laughs> he's getting yoked up. Bill, we appreciate that you. boy, Bill. We apologize. Your knees had to run over. You did great officiating yesterday, too. Made the game ending call. He did. Yeah, he did. Great in Pac Man's face. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate the fact that. Call. Yeah, I thought Pac was going to knock him out. Fucking horrible. Yeah, but Bill stuck by it. He, he did. Delayed. Was that in or out? <laughs> Bill, delay, delay. Boom. In. And then Pat comes over and starts yelling at him, and Bill goes, Boom. Man. That was <laughs> yeah. amazing. It was. it was. This is fucking new Bill, bro. Yeah. Attaboy, Attaboy, Bill. Bill. Attaboy, Appreciate Bill. you, Bill. New Bill. New Bill is awesome. Yeah, no um, bull. Yeah, no bull. No bull. This is new Bill. That's right. How many people should win here, AJ? 12 people. 12 people win oh, $500 who retweet this video and say something nice to somebody. All you got to do is throw that football into one of the holes in that net over there or the trash can that's right next to the bear that appears to be a cocaine bear, but it's actually a sober bear right now. It's, that's a sober bear. Yeah. It is not jacked up on anything. It's just hanging out with Chris Felica's face on front of it. Miss you, bear. So any of those holes and 12 people win $500 who retweet this video and say something nice to somebody. The one, all you need is one. All you're going to need is one. Matter. We know all you're going to need is one. Indecisive. Going towards the net. Oh, oh. that was a dart. Oh, it was. That was in. That yeah. was spinning that thing. That was net unkind there. Yeah. yeah. Net reference. unkind because normally that would fall into a hole mm -hmm. yeah. and 12 people would be winning. Good reference. Are you going back for the net again? Okay. A little, little thinner ball. Pac-Man Jones. Oh, there it is. Oh! Wow! Oh, my God! God. Slips it in the wrap.
rap sheet back door. Yeah. It was an absolute dime to that thing turned over. Mm -hmm. 12 people, $500 to retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put either your Venmo, your cash tag, what? or your PayPal account in there. Mm -hmm. Whatever would be the easiest way for you to get paid in that same tweet where you're saying something nice to somebody, maybe Aaron, because he's been taking a lot of heat. That's yeah. true. Maybe a friend that needs it on this day. Whatever you got to do, just retweet the video, say something nice to somebody, and put however we can pay you the most efficiently in the same tweet. You could be one of 12 winners of $500 because Pac-Man Jones oh, turns Pac yeah. AJ, we appreciate you today, bud. You're an absolute legend, pal. Appreciate you guys. It was fun today. Pac-Man, great day today. How are you? Hey, boy, hey, Pac. Hey, Pac. Appreciate talk you guys. Great, great, great day today, Pac. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, To dude. the rest of the team. Yeah, talks to the table. Great work today out of you boys. Great day. You too, Pac. One half of the hammer, Don. Don. Cowboys, Tony Diggs, what a day for you. And also, yesterday, won 2-0 college basketball, 3-0 NBA uh, basketball. Tony, Don. Don. on the hammer down. Speaking of, did you want to put up the... Oh, yeah, we do have a bracket that uh, we'll be doing for the third consecutive year here. Mm -hmm. PMS Bracket Bonanza 3.0 is officially up and running. All you got to do is scan this QR code. It will take you right to the link. $25,000 to the winner. Woo! In years past, we've given out Bitcoins. That's worth a good five, ten bucks now. Yep, that's, that's right. right. We've given out other monetary <laughs> values to the winner. We've tried to get it right. We certainly haven't. But this year is going to be the year where a $25,000 winner is going to change their life by predicting predicting an accurate bracket, even though everybody seems to get fucked day one or day two mm -hmm. every single time. Absolutely. Bar none. Hell yeah. Can't wait. I'm going to win this thing, AJ. You've got yeah. no shot. I wouldn't recommend you not entering it. You guys won't win. I'll I need win. to enter. I need to do this. Yeah, no, just don't do it, actually, because you're fighting for second place. <laughs> <laughs> Third place. Take a picture. Take a picture of the QR code, AJ. Yeah, oh, yeah, just maybe take it'll a picture. last longer. Okay. AJ looks so what? dumb. Well, somebody might be Who's taking a picture. Oh, yeah. You idiot. Hey, you want to smile or? Yeah. Oh, tough guy. Diggs smile, was telling smile. me to take a picture of my phone. Diggs was telling me to get in right now. Yeah. Oh, you're going to get in right now? It, it wouldn't be worth it because I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm too scared. I might as well just not enter. You're right. Smart. Smart play. Smart. Uh, you're you're right. Right. You could. 25000 will be available to one person. Self handicap. That'll be me. Yeah. Congrats well, to me. I don't know about paying that. me. No, your bracket is going to keep a billion still. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, then I'll, I'm going to enter here. Then. You know what? Year. We'll make it a hundred grand if you go perfect. It. Wow. You go if it goes perfect, we'll make it a hundred grand. Way to go. Look at us. Warren Buffett's doing a billion. We're doing a hundred grand. Why not? <laughs> you Why choose. Not? All right, and uh, to Aaron Rodgers for allowing our show to be the place in which he says everything that he said, and now it's running literally on every single screen out there. Mm -hmm. We are very thankful for him. Great work in the back, boys. And uh, we appreciate you all so much for allowing this to be our life. I addressed the New York Post our article about potentially <laughs> going to a network yep. earlier. Our life is in the middle of a lot. There's a lot of moving pieces. It is up to something season. The only thing that's going to remain consistent is we're going to have a blast on the afternoons right here on this day. Hell Every yeah. day. We appreciate you all so much. We'll see you tomorrow for an incredible... Oh, shit. That guy got signed Thursday. Martin yes. Madness starts tomorrow, baby. And tip off of March Madness. Boom. Boom. Oh, shit. Tomorrow's huge. Huge yes. day. We're all on West Virginia. Remember, yep, we're, all in, we're all in West Virginia oh, tomorrow. Two and a half. Team Rod. Team Rod. Team Rod. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. Hail Rod. Hail Rod. Hail Rod. Hail Rod. I'll tell you what, if you're going to raise hail, well, you better damn raise hail, right? And we're doing that tomorrow. Well mm -hmm. said. See you all then. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Goodbye.